Joe, you let me know when you're all set there. Oh, I'm born fucking ready. Dude. I know you were. Oh, yeah. Welcome. Hello, back hello, hello, everybody. To the Unorthodox Film Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, Bradford here, joined by Chris. Um, I'm sorry. I jumped the gun. Joined with Joe, as always, and Quinn, but we do have our guest today, Christopher Warren. Are you Christopher or are you Chris? Chris. Chris. All right, so uh, we'll, we'll, do the, we'll do the obligatory. We'll delete that, but I'm not going to. It's fine. So tell our listeners a little bit about... Uh, shit. Tell us a little bit about you, Chris. Uh, where do I start? What would you like to Something know? interesting. Um, what? What? To, uh, I guess uh, uh, more directly, uh, not just your general biography, yeah. but um, you work in the film industry. I do. Tell uh, us about that. So uh, I've kind of worked in all facets of the industry, strangely, um, but for the past, eh, let's say, 15 years, I've been a first AD, uh, which is the first assistant director. I've also directed... Uh, a couple features and a couple of web series um and yeah that's kind of where it all ends how did you how did you land into first ad so that's an interesting story uh i was actually a best boy on g and e you are the Again, bestest boy chris i know i know uh and we boy, lost was, our, was on a feature we lost our first and basically <laughs> they were like, well, Chris is really good. No one else wanted to volunteer. It was yeah. like, all right, we're going to need. And yeah. you turned around and everyone had took that yeah. big step back. And you were like, fuck. Exactly. They were like, well, Chris <laughs> is really good at paperwork. I mean, let's see what he does. And Because that's rest, what it's about. And the rest. Yeah, because that's not at all. What it, <laughs> I mean, it's part of it, but it's not all of it. But yeah, that, that started it. Mm. So Chris is joining us today. Uh, he graciously took the time to watch Desperado with us. Desperado was our role last week for uh, sequels that were better than the original. So we're going to be talking about that. And then uh, last week, Quinn had suggested that this week our, our film recommendations are going to be heist films. Right? How we feel Girl about that, guys? Yeah. Doing good. My, my guilty pleasure. My yeah. guilty pleasure? Yeah. By the way, I we, love do, them. we I... do understand that that is such a wide... Wide well, open. Basically, yep, if, if there's a strong, strong argument against it not being a heist movie, it's not a heist movie. But if there's three acts about a heist, then it's a heist movie. Yeah, I mean, so I, 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 okay. I toyed with, I toyed with a lot of different titles too. Um, I mean, a heist, heist. I think. Uh, I mean, we could look it up and, and read what the internet definition, definition no. is. What is a heist? Uh, but that's too late now because we've already so started. Many, yeah, no, it's just yeah. okay. So it's it's a good topic. I love the heist movie category, but. Like, and I always put a little bit of a qualifier because there is, I mean, it's damn near 100 years of cinema we're going on yeah. here. Probably. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Which is so, why we'll never be able to hit. And and that's why, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. Because one of the, the... It's more for my benefit. Because I'm thinking of every heist movie I've ever seen and trying to get three of them when we got four people. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make it easier to narrow the list like, by qualifying. So here's like, what, what type like of I said, movie. I think I have one that's going to... That's gonna none of y'all are gonna have, which is so, and, and that's too. perfect. So this is what I was gonna get to. One of the things that um, we really um, push for on this show is not so much berating someone for not having seen something, right. but looking at it as an opportunity to have something Let's great watch to watch. Show. I yeah, mean, especially yeah. when you're at that point, you're like, oh, there's nothing good out right now. What can I watch? And, right. and you know, you just dig into that old bank, and, and hopefully, the right. titles that we yeah. suggest are right. titles that you know people uh, find or discover, and and you know. Um, maybe realize, hey, this is some cool shit. I'm, I'm pleasantly been... surprised sometimes when Brad's like, I didn't even know about that movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I did look up, I typed in what is a heist on Google and immediately it offered heist film subgenre. <laughs> of course, from the ever dependable Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. The heist film or caper film is a subgenre of crime film focused on the planning, execution, and aftermath of a significant robbery. One of the early defining heist films was The Asphalt Jungle, which film... Genre 2000 wrote is, quote, almost single-handedly popularized by the genre for mainstream cinema. Have any of you ever heard of no. uh, The Asphalt Jungle? No. No. So we're not going to be talking about that tonight. We are not. <laughs> we are not. We are not. I've never heard of that. Before. All right. So before we get into talking about uh, any of that, uh, do you guys have anything you've had going on uh, recently? Any, any cool uh, set stories or anything before we jump into talking about Desperado? Um... I mean, I mean, this last weekend I did uh, a short film, uh, Dominus. Uh, we just pick up, so I think we're trying to turn it into a feature. Um, there was this really cool cemetery, yeah. like that picturesque cemetery uh -huh. that you're always looking for. Like it was, it was not 
grand. It was kind of tiny. I mean, for a cemetery. It right, right, right. Yeah. Still a large lot of land, at least two acres. Cemeteries are usually but the most depressing locations to show up at. It had, like, rolling hills, old, crazy, decrepit-looking trees. like Actual big, tombstones? Big, grand tombstones. That's the thing. People are like, some oh, I wouldn't be able to do this. You get that. It's just there the so long they were, like... Falling apart and yeah. like you could see them like rotting into the earth like yeah. from what like the eighteen hundreds. This is three doors down from Tanil's house, bro. Oh no, Canton. kidding! That's yeah. no Canton. kidding. Canton just just uh next Northville out there, like back in Ridge. Okay, yeah. wow, Ridge Road. Road. Yeah, I I got something. So big fan of Mandalorian, how they how they do it with the giant LED walls and stuff, and mm-hmm. they self light like, through that. Yeah. I actually got to work with a LED wall in Grand Rapids. Um. Yeah, and it, it was sweet, like, the way they used it to light the subject and be the background, and the way, like, the Unreal Engine monitor guy could control the whole world, like, they didn't, like, a building in the background, they just, like, moved it, made it farther back and taller, like, it was, it was really cool, and, like, I, I mean, big fan of the Mandalorian. I've not had a chance movie. to work on one of those, yeah. so that's super yeah, exciting. It, 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 have you had a chance, Chris, to work with the volume? I have, I have. They're fun. They're, they, it's surprising to me that they come in different sizes, because the conversation started with, like, the volume being this room, right. and now you're seeing, and, like, I saw pictures from... Uh, one of the, the sets that Joe had worked on last year, and they had a, a car set up, and it was just it was just a panel. It was probably do you know what size that was? That looked like it was uh, like yeah, 10 that, by 15 or something. It wasn't even like a full volume or LED wall. It was like yeah, it was like a, a 10 by 5 actually, like maybe six. I don't mm-hmm. know. If, I wasn't there that day, but I saw all the photos. Right. The footage turned out amazing. But what they did is they just had screens outside the windows, okay. and they moved them around the car. Or, uh, actually, I think the, the car was on Gojack, so they would rotate the car to oh, put okay. the screens where the camera needed it. Right. Okay. Which so is, it had yeah. three screens, one for each side, one for the back, right. one front, whichever way the car was facing. It was brilliant. It's fascinating. Yeah. I can't. I can't wait to to work on something one, like that. One day for setup, right? right. For all the tech setup. Yeah. And one yeah. Because they just to dial in the Unreal and make yeah. sure it all looks right. The old Grace and Wild Studios and good old B Stage. Uh, well, what's fascinating? Studio Center. What's fascinating about the things that you can do with the the volume now you obviously couldn't do back in 1995 and our film tonight desperado after having just watched it's crazy the things that were done without these just sort of effects, yeah. Yeah. Uh, things at your at your disposal so let's dive right into that um desperado i hope you guys have uh, taken a chance to watch it uh just in case we have any spoilers you know with the uh, review movies that we cover at the beginning of each episode we can't hide the classic film we can't hide the spoilers because we did tell you we were going to watch it and uh now we're going to dive into it yeah, at this point it's your fault so uh, we we rented it. I know I had said that I had a copy at home, and I do, but we didn't watch it at home, and I'm a dipshit and didn't bring it. So we rented it on Vudu. Right now, it is available on um, most uh, purchase platforms for rent or for buy. Like three ninety nine, right? Three ninety nine, yeah. yeah. And it was HD, and it was beautiful. Yep. So Robert it was, it was great. Robert Rodriguez's second film. Um, I do believe it was stated that it was made for, I believe, seven. The promise was he was make it for seven hundred thousand, make it look like a seven million dollar film. I right. think was the pitch. That was the pitch on that. Um, having uh, followed for the up, error, I think he hit it. Followed up hit um, mm-hmm. uh, El Mariachi, which was a tale of a of a lost love, and this is a, a revenge tale. So um, I want to start first with Quinn because Quinn had never actually seen the movie before. The rest of us actually like I I I'm yeah. a diehard yeah, Rodriguez yeah, fan. Yeah. So yeah. which. Uh, before we do that, can I just mention uh, I'm from Texas, so is Robert. I, I was going to mention that. I was going to mention that. Okay. And I, I, so, yeah, Chris is uh, visiting us up in the Michigan area now, uh, working on a few jobs. Yeah. And uh, we've been nice to him as, yeah. he, like, as much as we else from Texas, can. Being from Texas is like one of the, like, at least 30% of like the personality trait. Like, 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 no, you guys, like, literally every, every dude in the army from Texas has, like, a Texas flag on their kit and everything, like, that's... Just makes you think of Forrest Gump. And then we had Tex. I don't remember where Tex was from. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, We all know where Tex was from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So you, the the Robert Rodriguez lore is probably pretty uh, very familiar to you, being so, so close to it. Yeah. Um, I think we'll touch upon that too a little bit because I am curious. Sure. So Quinn, what uh, what did you think of Desperado? I mean, it just now it's called it classic is kind of like I'm being a bit of an imposter because I wasn't alive during like the classic '90s like action era, mm-hmm. but it made me feel very nostalgic about a time that I never experienced. That's um, cool. And it was, yeah, yeah it, was, it, awesome. it was it was also just like so much fun to watch like it was just like at, at least in the in terms of like 90s action at least like like top three that i've seen like it, it was just so like like 
like kind of like they're like whipping the guns uh, yes. like, <laughs> as they're shooting and they're shooting behind their back and there's like guitar cases with like machine guns inside and they're like hitting this like this weird one leg squat firing off an rpg it's just so cool and and the like the the neuro like the 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 sexy like like chin licking and yeah like it's, just, oh, yeah. it's just so it's just so 90s and just yeah i, I don't know I, I had a great time yeah but it has yeah. such a clean guys, guys, look to the 90s it. is chin licking yeah, 90s so no, like you know, like, like, like it had like, that uh, noir feel, yeah. but it no, he did. It was that the way it like dissolves in the next scene. Like every sex yes. scene in the 90s, it, like dissolves as they're like licking each other's nipples, or yep. you know, what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Somebody yeah. gets oh, their yeah. head blown off, but they're not afraid to do yeah. a little bit of slapstick humor in there. You know right. what I mean? Like, the, that's a Robert Rodriguez thing, but yeah, well, it was also apparent in the 90s action. Like yeah. they were a lot. The humor themselves. was, yeah, humor was always a big, a big part of it. But I think his subtlety in the way that he used it, especially in Desperado, was is fascinating. Um, the yeah, Troublemaker Studios has a whole different approach to that. Yes. They're, they're dragging the dead body out, and you've got the one guy following behind mop. it with a mop, yeah. just trying to mop it and, all and up. the least effort of mopping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and no, right. no, dry cleaning, mop too. Right. Yeah. no cleaning being done on it whatsoever. No. It's think, just, like, was right. that terracotta tile, or is it just how much blood they've just exactly. not exactly. mopped yeah, off yeah, the floor? Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess they treat their bar the way that grandma treats her skillet, right? They just don't wash the it fucking thing. It needs a lot of seasoning. <laughs> it's yeah, just got life on it. Yeah, yeah. Just, don't touch seasoned. that with steel wool. It's seasoned. wrong with you. It's seasoned. Don't touch it. Uh, so, Chris, um, yes. you've you've watched this movie quite a few times. Yes. Um, I grew up grew up like loving this film. Yeah. Um, any any new. Um, takeaways from it or is it is it something that you've watched recently or or multiple times enough that you've you've done explored it strangely i do remember watching this recently like i think it was last year at some point when i was mm-hmm. at home i was just like oh shit this is on netflix or whatever and i was like okay i'll watch desperado so i sat there and watched desperado and then i i went down the line again and went to once upon a time in mexico and all that right right when i watched them and um yeah it's just a good classic you know what I mean? Like, it's just solid. It holds up still to this day. You see yeah. the John Woo influence in it. Absolutely. You know, the diving, the sliding, the double guns. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of the things that, that I, I really took notice of this time uh, is how little space the, the plot covers. You know, it's, it really yeah. is in this town on one intersection. You get the alley, you yeah. get the bar, you get her bookstore. And then you get the the credenza or whatever that Bucho lives in. Right, right, yeah, the, right. the ranch. Or, yeah. yeah, right. The, the, yeah. Um, and his use of long lenses, I took a, a, a big notice of because it wasn't just like there's the the scene where he dives and saves the boy. Right. Um, and there's, you know, a, a, it squished. It looks great. But he also used it in the wedding sequence and the parade sequence at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And what I think it, it, it really did well was took a small area that he had access to or yeah. or availability of. There was of, no real was, master wide ever used in the whole movie. It made it he so that... He used a long shot instead. Oh, right. he made, yeah, he universe. made it so he could fit more of that world in without going right. super, super wide, wide to see the building's tops or right. to see that we're just dealing with this one street. Um, you know, we the one really, time we did see the tops of the buildings, we were aimed right at the intersection. Well, and realize so how tight that, that one used. intersection was, right? Right. So if he went so wide, he would probably would probably see all of our film deck. Right? Exactly. It all would have been there. Exactly. So he knew he had to tighten this up. To, to he was able work. to get eighty percent of the like he cre- he created so a proscenium really with it. You know, exactly. you've got the the buildings on either side, and then everything squished in, there and it was. Yeah, you know, what looked like hundreds of people, and it was probably 25, 30 townsfolk, right, you right. know, with signs and shit. Yeah. Um, what were your takeaways of the um, the action set pieces? Specifically, let's talk about the gunfighting. How the way that he shot that, the way that it was choreographed. Um, so it was funny Quinn brought that up because I was thinking I was like, you know, really, I mean, like, I don't even know if your age, if you were into this yet. Like, Wanted wasn't out yet. You know, Wanted, like, right? We didn't have any of those movies mm-hmm. back then. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't have any of the crazy, hey, let's bend bullets, Cur- John Wick, bullets, right? Yeah. That kind of thing, right? So we were doing this really cool, this, these really cool action sequences, you know what I mean? That you, it was kind of reinventing the wheel in action a little mm-hmm. bit with, with what Robert was doing. Yes, yeah, before the Matrix, before we married right. jujitsu with guns. And singing. he kept it a, a lot of close singles and such so that he could just fast edit them together to make the, the chaos as opposed mm-hmm. to trying to get five guys in one shot spraying, you know, d- down the house. Exactly. Well, and like speaking of those fast cuts, like not even just in the action sequences, when he's teaching that little kid guitar and he gets anxious about his hand right. and that 
right. that guitar oh, flip, the guitar that flip. close up. Just it's so visceral, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? In in a moment that is so like heartwarming, you mm-hmm. can still show the angst of that character beautifully. Right. right. This simple shot. That's one thing I've always known about Robert, like as far as anything I've ever seen him shoot, he really does tell the story through the lens. Like, he's a romance he he's well. romantic with the camera. Yeah. You can you can really visually see his hands on. I noticed a lot of it was handheld, a lot of it was um an orthodox handheld. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, um, I had mentioned while we were watching the uh, following the goons up the stairwell was very similar to some shots that he did in El Mariachi, and you, you can tell that it was it was more of a logistical decision to do that than an artistic decision because the shots that followed it were very well lit, very well composed. Um, but he chose to shoot with the the wider lens and and probably baby cradling the fucking camera. Mm-hmm. Um, Because that was film. That was uh, we were all film back then. So I mean, digital had just started to really kind of. He lashed. He lashed on to digital. um, I think Spy Kids two. Yeah. He got the Star Wars camera. Yeah. And and wanted to show that he could. I think was it was it a Sony? Was it the Star Wars camera? I thought he was on the red one. Or Spy Kids. He was. He was one of the Spy Kids one maybe. No, Spy Kids one was film. It was film. Film. Yeah. Yeah. I think Spy Kids. There's like five Spy Kids. But so they were they were having trouble with with introducing it because a lot of the old heads were like, no, film is the way. I'm remembering. I think it's either either swapped or Spy Kids two was the red. Spy Kids three was. The Star Wars thing because it was 3D. well, but it, this is why I say Star Wars. No, it was right after. It was right after Episode One. He used. He got the yeah, equipment so for Episode One. You might be right. I I just was like, oh, that's weird. Because no, nobody else possible. wanted to do it, and he was like, well, fuck it, I'll, I'll, I'll do, do it. it. Yeah. And you know, now because cost because he he's always looking at cost cutting, and I th- that's one of the things I really like to look at when watching his movies. Yeah. Um, but to take notice because this this one, um, I don't know if we've said it yet. We've said it several times tonight, but famously he. he Sold it to the studio that he wanted to make it look bigger, look, look bigger like than it million. cost, right? Yes, so that yeah. they could make the money back. And I think what's really cool about that, and to something that Quinn was mentioning, is you know the '90s action movies themselves. There are a lot of differences right. with Desperado to things like Hard Target or anything that Arnold was in or Steven Seagal. They're bigger people, they're stronger people, and they have that dominance and that menace. And Rodriguez decided to go with someone who is arguably a much smaller man, fit. But nonetheless, smaller but attractive. Right? Yes, like that's so his action. Dark. His action was right. it was classy. It was very yeah. like James Bond on on heroin. You yeah. know, yeah. his his mariachi character yeah. has yeah. this yeah. like this one focus. You right. can see he's a good guy. You can see that he he feels the pain of every life that he has to take. But in, what until he takes when out, you take everything from a good man. Right. Right. Exactly. How far will he go How to right him? that wrong? Right, right, right. So I think there, there, the film did a really good job of putting a lot of like, pacing the action sequences and keeping them coming enough. But to have done it with such a, a minimal budget is impressive to me. Well, and so Robert, like he kind of started that whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like that pitch of like, hey, I'm gonna make you, you know, I'll, give me seven hundred thousand, I'll make it look like seven million, right? He started that. And then it slowly became a thing that everybody was trying to do, right? Right. Like everybody ran to the studios and were like, oh, hey, you know, give me a million, I'll make it look like 10, you yeah. know? And that was just kind of became the it was the thing, and Robert kind of started it, you know? And and, and I I believe we are, we all have to be grateful to him for some of the opportunities that we've had, because I th- especially with, like I said, him latching on to the digital camera, if, if I don't know how many others after him, mm-hmm. or even at the same time, because things, you know, arrangements take time, so he could have made the promise that I'm going to make this movie with this digital and someone else could have beat him to it, but right. he was already worked. I don't know. Point being, without these people carving the way, like, yeah. the studios wouldn't have continued to make digital, and, and we would have just had TV on digital, and cinema would have stayed so, film. Yeah. Right, you know, but, and all of that is, I think, you know, played to improving TVs, improving, you know, our effects. Surely, improving... yeah. I mean, there's, but it's the mid-90s. It, when that was going on, there was... And it is because of Rodriguez and people like him, but there was that whole indie market where, like, they were, like, anybody they could give $100,000 to was able to make some kind of studio-esque film. Like, the mm-hmm. studio was... Right. That's where Miramax came from. Right. Basically because of Rodriguez and Kevin Lionsgate. Smith. Yeah, Lionsgate. All these smaller... Which Weinstein. blew up bigger than... Yeah. Well, 
That's a that's another episode. It's a truth. Well, it's a know, truth. Like I mean, Affleck Epstein, and Matt Damon, oh, right? Like sorry. they were doing that too. You yeah, I mean? they all were doing it. It was anyway. It was a it was a prime time. Right. But what Rodriguez was doing, like all those other examples, are drama pieces. They're you know stories that can be told with the camera. Mm -hmm. Rodriguez was like, yeah, but I want to shoot things and blow shit up. Exactly. And and do it with the same you know sure, budget. But, or, but there was like the SLC punks, the Tank Girls, the yeah, uh, Garden State. Nice. You know, th yeah, all yeah. these things yeah. that w would not have been able to be made. Absolutely. If it weren't for the pioneers that what you know what I mean, Absolutely. three, four, a decade before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It did fizzle out a bit because you know the market changes so much. But right. the nineties, especially mid to late nineties, the the indie market was just a flutter. Because mm -hmm. you could actually, because it was still film at that point. Right. So it wasn't what it is now where you can just go out, buy a decent camera, and your buddies over a weekend or a week can hump the shit out. Yeah. You needed the funding. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. still think about it back then, even like when digital had just started. I mean, if, yeah, I don't know if our listeners are going to know what these are, but like the Red One, I mean, that was a gigantic tank of a camera oh yeah like it was heavy and hot as and fuck. hot it would overheat took forever to load like which is you know it was the beginning of digital so like mm -hmm. we did 45 have, pounds without the lens or a yeah, i did uh i did a festival like on the river there's a, a an electronic festival that's pretty big here in detroit mm -hmm. and uh i i interned for um movement. Mo movement i interned for i forget the name of the company that runs it but for them yeah. um and so I had some access to behind the scenes stuff and there were some Canadian photographers, journalists that were there. There was a team of like 12 of them. Mm. And uh, it was the first time I'd ever seen a red and they were going, I was like, man, I got to ask you some questions and shit. And so we were talking about it and they had their company. So they, the, like I said, they had 10 or 12 journalists moving around there from Canada, but they had like 20 or 30 cameras because they kept burning them out. Cause they were out in the heat shooting them long, you know, exposures and everything. And, and they would just keep burning them out. Yep. Oh. Reds, reds were they're running without the fan on. Were they worried about audio at a fucking music festival. Well, no, no, no. Reds were notorious for overheating back then. They were yeah. Just, when, it's just yeah, the data we're, process. Yeah, yeah. I forget. We're thinking of gen one. That's my yeah, bad. Yeah. Like literally reds were notorious for overheating. Like that was just their thing. And I mean, granted they fixed that issue. It's not like that. Anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. I even remember like, uh, first time I saw like a Gen Three, it's still like if we don't like you've been running this scene twelve minutes, we need to cut. Like it's, yeah, oh, the yeah. fan's gonna turn itself on exactly. and yeah. ruin the yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. So um, Chris, being from Texas, um, is there uh, is there Texas love for Rodriguez? Is it still is it is it still like a just a small uh, film community type conversation? Is there no? I mean, there's does he have a different impact? Yeah, there? yeah. I mean, there's absolutely love for Rodriguez. I mean, they love the studio. Troublemaker is down there. Mm -hmm. um, they love the studio. Everybody works there. You know, if you have the opportunity, you do. You know, yeah. You the story that of him down. building that is phenomenal, right? And so, um, I mean, everybody loves what he did for Texas too. I mean, mm -hmm. let's be real; like he kind of started and really pushed. For, was uh, was South by Southwest a thing before him, it, it or was, but it was did more that of, kind of it was more of a music festival? Okay, it really wasn't. And I I don't want to say that it was Robert that got. I don't the want to credit him for it, but if. If, but, if he brought attention to de Texas filmmaking. I think so. Like, he brought more attention to it. And now, granted, South By became, is what we all know now, is mm -hmm. this huge film and music festival, right? It started off as just music fest. It wasn't, right. okay. it wasn't film. And then it became it film. It grew, grew to that, right? Interesting. Um, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I know Robert 100% supports it, right? Like, mm -hmm. we all do, right? Because it's it helps us. Yeah. Right? We get a festival that everybody wants to come to. And right? it's not uh, Sundance. Exactly, exactly. And it's, I mean, I don't want to say it's in that regard, right? But No, but it's different. But people go, okay, Sundance, Cannes, Sundance, South by. South by Southwest. Right? They're in that South, list. Right? South by yeah. Southwest uh, encourages, um, I think, a different breed of filmmaker. You right. know, there's certain filmmakers that are great filmmakers, but the films they make aren't ever going to be eligible for Sundance consideration. Right, right, right. And South by Southwest allows for that. that Anybody openness. have anything else to say about Desperado? Or should we move on to our list? Oh, uh, no, no, we're not there yet. Um, I, I want to talk about music um, yeah. in, in the Desperado. Sound, the soundtrack, the score? Yeah. Um, we, were, we were getting there. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were working our way to it. Um, yeah, I mean, just to finish that note really quick on South by, like, it was um, basically, it's great. I love the festival. I love going there when I can. Obviously, I'm a working man now in the mm -hmm. film industry, so it's kind of hard. 
Um, I will say though that as the years have progressed, uh, the it's even the same kind of now with Sundance with with South by. It's yeah, like, it's, it's gotten it's pretty hard, capitalistic. Yeah, it's hard to really get in. Like Indie Darlings used to be the thing, mm-hmm. right? And that was the thing to go to South by, and it was same same with Sundance. Yeah. Now not so much. Like it's it's like you know you have bigger like I mean they premiered John Wick four. Like why the fuck? Yeah. Does that, right, South by. Yeah. Why the oh. fuck does that need to premiere at South by? Like that's, <laughs> that's getting ridiculous. a huge distribution. Yeah, yeah that's you know what I mean. Like. So stuff, the line. It, it doesn't need the buzz. Right, <laughs> right. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not talking shit about South by because I'd love to be in South by at some point. Yeah, right, of course. But, John Wick is but it's, its own it's machine. Just weird, it doesn't right? need that. Exactly. It's just weird, right? Like it's, it, And you do still have the independent films that get on, but it's not like it used to be where like those were the premieres. So they're high, they're high budget indies that get in there. Right. Very well produced. Right. And okay. it's like, you know, it used to be the indie darlings would have the premieres at the end of every night. You yeah, I mean, and now it's become, and I mean, I get it. It's money, right? Like you, you everything's going to grow. Festival going, yep. you got to make money, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I get premiering John Wick. I mean, I think they've premiered Insidious. I think they've premiered several other things. You know what I mean? That you're just like, okay, I get it. It's the money grab. Right? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. been growing that way. Right. Yeah, right. So, uh, um, so returning to Desperado, um, I I personally am a big fan of the soundtrack. It's actually something I listen to quite often. Yeah, it's um, great. The I believe it was Los Lobos that they got mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Uh, do the opening song and then a lot of the guitar work in it. And then you've got Tito and Tarantula, right. uh, who played Tava in the bar, the gentleman with the sunglasses. He is a friend of Robert Rodriguez, yeah. used to be a member of an L.A. band called Cruzados, and Robert has leaned on him and for a lot of his soundtracks. And that that element of, because, you know, he's, I, I like that he's he's very rooted in his, in his heritage right and he brings that to the movie unapologetically Mm -hmm. and that makes each of his movies that much more unique and the way that he used the music in desperado was incredibly sexy incredibly exciting and um really i think accentuated the cinematography and the moments and the delivery that that antonio banderas had like the look i mean there was something that quinn had said we were watching and it was just like he effortlessly looked yeah, you're just amazing. Yeah, I mean, was, Joe said it too. Joe was like, <clears throat> "Okay, I mean, I'm straight, but I get it. I get <laughs> like, it. You know, like yeah, I mean, yeah, I get yeah, it. I mean, it really is. I'm sorry, Quinn didn't. Even Did I, no, you're good. You did. I thank you. No, I will. I, I will. will. I mean, I'd hit it if if I were swinging <laughs> that way. If I were swinging <laughs> that way, just that line alone. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Quinn? I was. It was the scene where he was. Uh, he was walking before the dude pulls to pistols on him and there was like the shadow over his eyes yeah and it was, i was just like dang like he just looks so fucking cool like yeah <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah he he was able to just emote with this expression in that movie so right. very so well and i think you know 30 the years of bigger guys walking away from explosions trying to look like antonio banderas and right. desperado Man. <laughs> right i mean he, i mean yeah it's like you know you think about it, like you were saying with arnold with stallone with all the big guys right mm-hmm. you know the big action heroes right and you've got Antonio Banderas, who looks, I mean, he looks great, but he is not, he is not them. You know what I mean? Right. He's not buff. He's not, you, you know. reapproach what an action hero could be exactly. in a whole different, a whole different facet. Um, the, uh, was, was there anything else you wanted to mention about the music? No, you guys covered it. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the score. It really brought to life the opening. The open, I mean, it was the first time watching it, but I, I just got the feeling of just how iconic. Well, you guys will start singing it, the opening song. Yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay, mi amor. Yeah. Ay, mi amor. I'm sorry. I'll do the whole thing. Um, <laughs> I think the movie has an incredible amount of sex appeal, which I think yes. was a, a staple of 90s action movies. Absolutely. But he, he did it in a way that was not overly provocative. Like, it was definitely sensual. It was incredibly erotic. There was there were a, a lot, lot of, of implicit, there like, was implicit nudity, not a lot of, enjoy. you know, like, yeah. I think you, you probably saw uh, Selma Hayek topless, like, once, but she was covered and veiled well enough that it was more outline and shadow. Like, it yeah. was it was the presence of the figures I mean, and the dance. you see some titty, but it wasn't about the titty. It was... The eroticism it was the very, itself, very yeah. evocative, and it was also, it was also very quick. Yeah, like, yeah. you could have not out, seen you know her I mean? breasts and still been just as yeah. erotic. Well, and there were a lot, there were a lot of camera setups in there. They just kept it moving to different areas and and finding different ways to, um, 
Like he, we all know what they're doing. Exactly. The Spurs yeah. running the the boot Spurs across her ass, and but then like Chris had, Chris had mentioned while we were watching that the the immediate juxtaposition goes to Bucho, the 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 lead villain, um, making it with just some rando, and it's a wide shot of her just riding him like a Kmart horse. You see true and he romantic just, bliss, and he just shoves her off and smokes, you know, puffs a cigar, in her, but well, but puffs a cigar in her mouth. Right. Like, Any other movie would have taken yeah. the the villain sex scene and gone over the I top with it. With villain it. sex scenes can sometimes be, you know, far more. Um, um, that's the word I'm looking for. Vulgar. Vulgar. Yeah. Vulgar. Right. There was there was no vulgarity no. in in the sex scenes. No. His no, was, was very dry done. and just wham bam. Thank you, man. Get yeah. off me. Get out of here. Like I don't want to see you. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. which was really nice going from that to that. Yeah. You know? The juxtaposition really just, was brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Just telling that two different stories of two different people. You know? We have we have gone this whole way without mentioning Steve Buscemi. I the was, cameos in this okay. movie are so that monologue, that open Marin, monologue. Uh, Quentin yeah. Tarantino making an appearance, Danny Trejo. Yeah, oh, my boy Danny. <sighs> the uh, OG the, Machete. Not only are the jokes good, but the way they're delivered. Mm. Yes. It's just. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve Buscemi is, first off, I miss him. You know, uh, I, I don't recall the last thing I've seen him in. Mr. Deeds. He doesn't have a whole lot of uh, long standing roles mm. anymore. Uh, and even that one was was. I mean, he he's probably had me right now. Is it really? I think he, he is. He did Boardwalk TV. Empire for like. Oh, that's right. That he was did. A long time ago. Yeah. He it did. It was about ago. ten years ago. He might be on something else. I don't know. I don't know. I I fucking love Steve Buscemi. Yeah. But it was probably that so movie. Much that movie and content. Fargo were probably the things that made me a fan of Steve Buscemi. And, yeah. and oh, in my memory, they're <laughs> they're the standouts. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's not forget. Donnie, shut the fuck. Up. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Yeah. Well, in the Armageddon, let's not forget him riding the rock. Well, he's been in other things. I, mean, uh, I realize that Armageddon. I forget a lot about Armageddon. Oh, don't be wrong. Like, yeah, he was, I'm not a huge I almost, he was the yeehaw riding until, the rock. Exactly. Like, like, until about 15 seconds ago when you said it, I had forgotten <laughs> about Armageddon. So, yeah, yeah no, now don't, there's that. Don't make me put the Aerosmith in your head. Uh, don't, don't, please don't. Don't tell me you're an <laughs> asteroid guy. Because there's always like a... Volcano Dante. Oh, impact. yeah. Deep yeah. impact, impact Armageddon. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, there was that two. whole thing. This is, that's my point. Um, so, I mean, I guess we can wrap it up on Desperado if nobody has anything else to say. Joe, Quinn, I mean, Chris, anything else you guys wanted to add? I, if you have not, if obviously you've gotten a lot of spoilers. If you have not watched this movie, you absolutely should. Like, don't sit on it. Like, the one, the one thing I want to say is, like, when you do take this movie, like, it's a trilogy now, right? Like, if you, like, what I love about Robert Rodriguez as a storyteller is if you watch all three of these back-to-back -back shirts, it's, it's half your day. But you see all these tropes that he does towards each movie in the next right. one. Mm -hmm. right. Not to mention, like, when you get that familiar with the storyline, there's so much brilliant foreshadowing. Like, that sex scene where he puts a cigar out in the guitar, yeah, guitar ashtray right. like that he's probably had since a kid that was probably their fucking fathers right they learned a guitar from right you know what i mean yeah. all these little things like when steve buscemi he's like what are you my big brother and he yeah, goes yeah. what well, i do for response before you but right there like it's telling you right ultimately here's right. the end of the story exactly. is the relationship with his brother and his right. family right. is what we're we're in this for right, right, I think right, for right. an action movie, it really did Just do really a good done. job at telling a story. Yeah, like, I mean, it's more that's of a, what I'm saying. it's really more of a drama with action based around it. Yeah. Like, because, and it's, some of this goes back to probably some of Robert's roots and the telenovelas and stuff like right. that. You know what I mean? Like, they did a lot of that. It's they an action have, noir. Like, yeah. It's a romance, but it's explosion. Mm -hmm, right. It's, they would have drama, but they would have some action base around it. You know what I mean? So... Very it's, true to his heritage. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, and it's cool to see him bring that to an American screen. You know. And, yeah. And obviously, like, like we all have said, it's an amazing film. And like, you know, I just thinking back on like what would happen if we wouldn't have had Desperado and we wouldn't have had like Robert Rodriguez. Right. Like, think about it. Think about all the movies. He's a big would, impact on on had. my turn towards <laughs> studying movies, right. watching them as an art form. Right. Um, I mean, Sin City was a. I mean, a masterpiece. Yes, it was. Fucking masterpiece. Yes. And I mean, even that, that's a whole other conversation we'll have another day, but that did a lot for moving filmmaking forward. Absolutely. Um, the last thing I'd like to say about, uh, not even Desperado, but the whole franchise, is that, so when it comes to Once Upon a Time in Mexico, 
and we could go on about this forever. So I just want to like I have a, like half the story to me is like him in like a coma, right? Like all the really out. Oh, this was that shit. canon he wanted to yeah. bring. Out. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Joe does this. Joe just creates his own for, canon I'm sometimes. Like, wait. Well, it's some, okay, hear him out. Well, hear him you know, out. Sometimes the disbelief is too much for me to sustain unless I'm like, oh, but if this happened, that'd be fun. Yeah. You right. So right. Well, I mean, his mariachi well, friends get killed, right. and then they and, show up again in Once Upon a Time Mexico, and right. you're like, but, but they're but different how? people, though. Yeah. Like, he yeah. just... So, yeah. so his life goes on, and he meets... But, like, she just, like, sleeps with this general, this whole other love thing. So, like, that's kind of, like... In his mind, the torment of having to kill his own brother... He makes it this army general. Mm -hmm. Do you, you get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's yeah. more of like his, in, his internal demons, right? Yeah. It's it's internal torment. Like, that's his projection of what happened in Desperado. Okay. Huh. So, half the movie is that, and half of it is him hallucinating that what's actually going on is this crazy general army thing when it's just him and drug dealers and his brother. That's interesting. Huh. And he keeps moving through Mexico, making more mariachi friends, meeting a new girl that he loves. Still, yeah. for some reason, looks like some high. Yeah, <laughs> it is some high. Yeah, it is. But yeah. you get what I'm saying. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. part of the delusion. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. that's Chris, interesting. I've never thought of that. But that's yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's interesting to listen to. I have not ever thought of it either. But um, next time I watch it, I will have to keep that in mind because that's. Yeah. Um, By the way, I don't really watch Once Upon a Time that often. I, it's one of those that I'm like. It's a it's a guilty pleasure for me. It's it's one that for me it's a trilogy completion. I enjoy it because I like the wonkiness that Robert Rodriguez right. does. Right. So However, I acknowledge shots. that it's not Desperado. Right. Like Desperado could be watched on its own, seen right. as a singular movie, not necessarily part as a trilogy. But at the same time, as part of the trilogy. I mean, Johnny Depp is just fucking fun. In oh, yeah, totally. Movie. Yeah, totally. Fucking great with the I eye mean, gouging. Oh. It's that, just, was basically, that was basically the studio. Are you a Mexican or a Mex or Mexican? That was basically the studio giving Robert a ton of money and just saying, go have fun, essentially. Yeah. Because Somebody he, took the reins off. Because and, that was in that era where he just knocked out mm -hmm. Spy so Kid movies. Many, and and, and, well, the, and uh, we were just at Sin City. It was I believe. That. Uh, Sun City was, was after, after Once Upon right, a Time. So he had this momentum going that he was all just of it. That's 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 how he got the yes. I mean, the guy has his own TV network now. I mean, he's he's just like, how can I continue to do what everyone else is doing, but different and, and make money out of it? Like I said, he was on fire. Like, um, have you received any notification? Are we good to keep Dawn going? Series. I think so. Yeah, I have not seen anything as of yet. So other than uh, Liz asking if I called. So I uh, well, of course you did, but it's, it's, all, it's all taken care of. Yeah. Okay, so then let's move on. Uh, the, tonight's topic for recommendations, we're going to be picking heist movies. Uh, with the four of us here at the table, we're going to keep it to three picks apiece. Uh, we're going to go around the table. We'll go around the table once, uh, give our first recommendations based on heist movies, uh, as we previously discussed early in the episode. And then we will take a quick break and come back and finish out our list. Yeah, 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 man. Drink up. Crank that shit. All right. All right. If you can reach, you can give me another one. If All not, right. I'm going to keep going. Let's we'll break into it. Um, so let's see. Let's. Uh, we usually start with our guest, but right now he is my waiter and retrieving something to drink. So, Quinn, why don't you start us off uh, with your first heist recommendation for the evening? Thank you, Chris. You're welcome, sir. So, my first one. Um, it was the first one. It's not so like when you they say a heist movie, you obviously think of like um, a heist or whatever. But I, I think I would, my first pick is going to be Reservoir Dogs. You know, it's a, the only heist movie that, that like doesn't actually have the heist in it, but it's everything afterwards. Yeah, and I it's the aftermath the of the heist, heist and yeah. what goes yeah. wrong. It's yeah. it's like I don't know. It's one of my more favorite movies. I don't want to say it's like my top five, but it's like oh, definitely I mean, like yeah, yeah. It's definitely like one of my favorite movies. Um, yeah, it's just so classic. I it's remember like, the first yeah. time I watched it in like middle school. My mom was like, Another "Turn that off! They're Steve saying Buscemi the N-word." Like, oh yeah, 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 lots. yeah, yeah Tarantino lots. was just <laughs> famous for that. That brilliant Steve Buscemi monologue. Yeah. I don't tip. Steve Buscemi, yeah. You know what yeah. this is? This is the world's tiniest violin playing for all the world's waitresses. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or, like the ear cutting off scene. It's just so classic. Like, oh yeah, thing. and it's also so kind of a chamber piece too. Yes. So yes, yeah, it's got so many like, cool things going for it, where it kind of redefines. The whole heist movie thing, like Chamber Piece. Um, yeah, it's brought QT it's got a into great the, cast in the mainstream. Yeah. Chris Penn, uh, uh, Michael Madsen, Michael and Madsen, one yeah. of my Timothy favorite Roth, roles. Baby. Timothy, Timothy Roth, baby. Timothy Roth, I, I love Tim Roth so much. Harvey Keitel. 
without Harvey go. Keitel, the movie wouldn't have happened. No, exactly. And then for him to yeah. deliver such a such a performance, like it, yeah. the whole yeah, the whole Mister for a movie that White is Mr. remembered Pete as being incredibly the, violent, the it's actually the, doing the not violent, yeah. and a lot of that violence is portrayed through the actors. Right. Yeah. And the aftermath, and and you know the blood the reaction and else, to but, be, <clears throat> that moment being brought up. Their anger, right? that Mex the classic Mexican standoff, the one that was on the DVD cover for the twentieth release or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, because once again, you got to realize, like, this is we're going back to like with Robert Quentin. That was Quentin's same thing. Like, mm -hmm. it was literally, hey, I'm gonna make a movie. Um, give me this much money, I'll make it look like it's uh, even. Uh, yeah, the, you know what I mean. One touring really without hadn't. mariachi, one touring with Reservoir Dogs. Like, yeah, exactly. that's what we I got. Mean, it was their starters. You know? I mean, Reservoir Dogs has that mean street taxi driver fucking feel to it. Like, mm -hmm. it's got, he was, he was able to take a large concept like the heist, the, the jewel heist, which we do get a glimpse of, yeah. but even the amount that we see is so limited and it's all just implanted in our mind that he, he just completely subverted. It's more of a plot the device than actual, actual crazy. Story. Right. The stories, the relationships these people build and how it tears. But it the, the story yeah. of the robbery Beautiful. itself is so fucking violent, but you literally never see any of it. Yeah, the, you the get way a hint that they, at how violent he was. All in your head. How off and bad he was it? Right. But like, it had to be worse than that, right? Yeah. That's the yeah. whole thing. Is and that's the beauty of the art of the film is leading to the illusion, showing less and alluding to more. Mm -hmm. The imagination runs wild. Mm -hmm. What I've always Let the audience. What say, I've oh, always God, God, it, yes. really how far liked does about. Your mind go? What I always really liked about Quentin Tarantino was his use of dialogue. Totally. You know, I, 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 that's not a new observation. He's, he's famous for it, yeah. but for a reason. You right. know, his, his aptitude to be able to deliver so much of the plot without leading the way that so many others do it. Like when you say plot points in dialogue, most of the time it's fucking corny. But he yeah. finds a way to work it into the conversation mm -hmm. that it's not corny. Yeah, it's, it's clean. It's so natural, it's almost like nonchalant. You don't even notice it's there. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah, you don't realize he's telling you something. Like to the away. point, like uh, Robert Rodriguez has a brilliant way of adding humor to to an to a scene, right? Whether mm -hmm. it be action or romance, a, a little bit. Even, yeah. But then, so in Desperado, when Quentin Tarantino has his part and he tells that joke. I mean, it was written by Robert Rodriguez, but the way Quentin tells it yeah. is not necessarily the way Robert wrote it. No. But no, that yeah. inflection that he gave because of it's his Quentin. storytelling it's as well, yeah. Yeah. you see why he's so good at dialogue. Right. Yes. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and another banger soundtrack. Yeah, that one does have a banger. His use of music is just inspiring. Yep. yep. Never using something modern, always trying to find something out of the box. Uh -huh. Um Death Proof is a pretty good example. But and also something that, choice, something that easily yeah. get the rights Reservoir, to. You know what I mean? like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Because like, he always he finds the stuff that's well, like, okay, I love this song. Mm -hmm. you know, how hard is it to get the rights? And a lot and, of times he yeah. turns it into like a one-hit wonder, too, especially if it's more obscure, you know? Yes. Like, and that's kind of cool, you know, the yeah. way he like makes... Miser years Pulp after Fiction. the release of Resurgence and yeah. the bigger mm -hmm. popularity that the music's yep. ever seen in The music lifetime. was as big a part of that movie as everything else was in that movie. Yeah. It was its own character as you know portrayed by Stephen was that Stephen Wright Stephen Wright as the yeah the, the radio DJ yep so great choice uh, uh, Quinn that was on that was definitely on my list as well so I'm glad you brought yeah, that you, one up you knocked that tunes one to keep on trucking all right, so uh, we're just going to bounce around. I'll manage this. Chris, we're going to go over to you. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, we, yeah. We, are, we really are bouncing around. Right? Yeah. Well, I'm ready. All right. She's not ready. I'm ready. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, Joe. No, no. I'll, 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 I'll give it to Chris. I'll give it to Chris. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, so I'm going to bring this one up uh, Inception. That That is. Okay. You, you said you were going to surprise me. I haven't gotten there yet. Oh. Yeah. There's more picks. Uh, I have more picks. Uh, okay. I wrestled with this. I, I actually, I'll let you talk first. <laughs> That's so, on my list. I did too. Both of yours have been on my list. Yeah, yeah. I did wrestle with it, but at the end of the day, it is a heist. Mm -hmm. It's a truly magnificent, crazy heist. So my it is a my heist. semantic point of so it brilliant. wasn't that they yeah. wasn't they weren't trying to steal something. Right. They were reverse stealing. They were reverse trying stealing. To, correct. You know, they were sneaking correct. in and breaking in. Correct. To leave something. Correct. Correct. They were trying to drop. Uh, plant a seed, basically. Right, but ultimately, even that 
planting was for nefarious reasons. Exactly. So it was a heist. It's all corporate espionage, yeah. right? So it's still, yeah, yeah. I mean, a group of thieves planning for one goal, right? right? How do you go wrong? Like it, that whole cast is just phenomenal. It was right? so brilliant, phenomenal cast, mm -hmm. like, so well done. And, and the the I I will stand behind the fact that the visual effects in that are more appealing to me. Than like Doctor Strange love or Doctor Strange, which came years after, yeah. But was so fucking confusing and lazy, like with the but the world bending when they bent the city and everything. The everything was so seamless. The different levels of dreams. Yeah, it was so, just so it was well magnificently done. done. Right. Right. Um, Nolan, baby. Yeah. No, yeah, I was Nolan, gonna say, Nolan's another one of those Nolan, directors man. that I just admire so much for what he does mm -hmm. and what he adds uh, or tries. Like I'm excited about Oppenheimer. So am I. No question. How could you I will not be? absolutely see it. But like, yeah. So I mean, I mean, I I am hoping that everyone on this has seen Inception yes. at some point. Not you guys, but I'm talking about our listeners as well. Yeah. I, I can't imagine you haven't. If you haven't, fucking correct that. What the fuck? Is what I, I dragged say. my feet on it for a minute when it came yeah. out. Um, not really. Well, here's the thing. I'm a Nolan fan, so immediately I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. But I'd been a Nolan fan. I uh, loved Insomnia. Uh, I loved. I, I liked the nice. following. Right. Okay. So when they were like. Yeah. And, he went and did Batman, right. and then you know, Prestige was kind of a hit. I like Prestige, I but it, Prestige. but it Prestige. wasn't a banger. It wasn't right, a, it? Didn't right. you're talking about the Prestige? Prestige, fucking brilliant. But it the didn't magic, it didn't magic. make it didn't make so in good. the bucks, the bucks, the bucks. So now all of a sudden, Christopher Nolan has this movie that literally everybody is loving. I was like, ah, well, I don't need to fucking see that. <laughs> <laughs> so you were being that, he, he yeah? Was, he was being Bradford. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's just yeah, it's so beautifully done. Um, the way it leaves you at the end. I mean, I'm inspired by that every time. Yeah. Like, well, it's still, it's still, kind of, it's been, it's been determined what the ending means by multiple different people, including right. uh, Michael Caine. Yeah. But we still debate it. Exactly. There, there's, you know, it's not, it's not the briefcase from Pulp Fiction. Like there is a definitive Nolan answer. himself has said, you, every you. single one of you, that's all in your head. Yeah. It's, it's on you. Like whatever. <laughs> the you wobble think. should have said everything. Yeah. yeah. He said it himself. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> It's fantastic. Like I it, love it. It's, it's so just, good. Yeah. They, but that's how good it is. The, the creator can tell you you're wrong about your feeling, and you're like, no, I yeah, don't believe I'm you. You're lying wrong. to Because me. it's lying. one of those movies that requires multiple watches. I don't think anyone ever gets 100% of that movie in yeah. its first watch. No, they don't. No, so, it, so even, like, it was, I followed it beautifully, but every time I watch it, I still, it's like reading your favorite book again. Well, you so see it's, another part of you can check out a different angle. area of a frame or a different composition and catch some things where you're like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. little yeah. extra hints, little extra nods, little extra Easter eggs and things like it's, that. It's just so packed. It's fantastic, man. Like, there's just so many things that you miss and, you know, you yeah. fall in love with and you follow Brilliant. those characters. And like, I thought you were going to say something. Oh, no. But yeah, you follow those characters down this, this crazy journey, you know, yeah. that is like, how many, what, they went three levels? Wasn't it right? Like, they're, yeah, nobody ever goes through levels. Goes we're through gonna have levels. to specially formulate yeah, yeah. a, yeah, they have to deep, a a deep to, dive into the yeah, book, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's like, it's just crazy in the way that they have figured that all out. And like, I mean, I, you know, I do love Leonardo DiCaprio, I think he's a talented actor, sure. Um, but honestly, are you about to disparage him? No, but he honestly, is our generation, Jack Nicholson, he's he not is. a tough guy, but honestly, jo Joseph Gordon Levitt. Hands oh, hands, hands down. down. Hands down. Hands down. If yeah. I was going to have a man crush, like, that that's my gay hall pass. Okay, so not make, gay, it, but, make it yeah. two. That's now two times. <laughs> <laughs> like, I actually wouldn't do Antonio Banderas. I just get it. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll leave that one open. Joseph, for... Joseph Gordon Love It, though. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He, is he looked artist. at me right, and I was standing there. I mean, I think about it. Okay. I, I'm I'm in love with I am in love with his performances every time you see him on he's on so screen because he's yeah. he's one of those people that I you you can't figure him out based on his roles. There are some actors you're like I kind of know who he is based on like Seth Rogen. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know who Seth Rogen is yeah. regardless of you know like I get it. Yeah. Joseph Gordon Levitt like I've seen him as Joseph Gordon Levitt so I know that okay. but from his roles he's a different. He exudes something different from each of his different roles, and and that role specifically uh, just was fascinating. Uh, a quick, quick uh, appearance by what was his name? Oh, uh, is it Nicholas? Um, mm. The boy from uh, uh, Mars Attacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name. Uh, no, no, I'm thinking. Face. Yeah, yeah. He was also in uh, Independence Day. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know his name. But um, 
Remember the face, though. This yeah. Is yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I always called Joseph Gordon-Levitt like a chameleon, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's so good, just that dude. type of actor that literally, he can, you can give him any role and he'll figure and it out. And I can't say he's had a bad career. The guy's no. everywhere all the time, but yeah. he's not a name. Like, you mention him in Average Company, and they're like, who? And you, you have to figure out, like, are you a well, like, 30 found, Rock? Or a 30, I, found, yeah. I found him on Third Rock from the summer. Yeah, you're a Third a Rock kid, fan. And I just, I just immediately was like, this guy's awesome. Yeah. 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 And, like, everything he's done has actually been fucking good. Yeah. You know what I mean? There are mm -hmm. people that I connected with when I was younger. I'm like, yeah, fuck that. Well, what's funny <laughs> is you look at him at Third Rock, and he's just this skinny, scrumpy, like, long-haired kid. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, he, then you go to so, Inception, and he's, like, this short-haired, uh, yeah, dashing, like, dashing, dashing, gentleman. Yeah, yeah dashing mm -hmm. looking gentleman you know and, what i mean you're like holy shit like like if if you really are a, a true fan of joseph gordon lovett he has his own thing called hit record that's correct yeah it's, it's a amazing. whole artist collective and yeah. if you've not heard of this hit record.com check that shit out yeah. it is brilliant yeah. it's uh it all started with him and his brother and his brother got, was sick and died and so, oh it's, I didn't it's, know it's that. a whole story it's sad i want to get into it but like that's his like if he's not like he does these Hollywood movies to fund that project. It's artist collective mm -hmm. and it's just brilliant. Yeah. And he's always posting, like trying to get new content and stuff. It's really cool. I, I do like what he does there with that. Yeah. Uh Joe, what do you got for us? Well, I've got a list of twenty, but you're telling me I gotta do three. So mm -hmm. it's always I'm always being whittled down by you. You're always you're always but I'm here to do. I'm here Limiting to limit you. Me. I'm here to limit Hit the you. Fence down. Joe, outside. I'm the, I'm the horse blinders. This is the this is the podcast. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, 1994, Trapped in Paradise. Okay. Nicholas oh. Cage, Dana Carvey, John Lovitz, fresh out of prison, Alvin, Dana Carvey, and Dave Furpo, John Lovitz, pull their brother Bill Nicholas Cage back into a life of crime with the siblings' foolproof bank heist plan. Takes a tailspin when Alvin gets lost in the getaway car. That's how the criminal nitwits wind up trapped in the southbound burg of Paradise, Pennsylvania on Christmas Eve. Wow. So it's also a Christmas movie. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a comedy. It's a it's 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 labeled like comedy I, romance, I question, but it's just this oh I question oh, I love it. I love it too. So I question the one thing. Um Quinn did make a statement last episode. That we want heist movies. Bank heist. Where, in the synapse. Get off my nuts. Where the heist isn't just in the first act and then forgotten no, about. No, no, it's for the whole... Like, they the don't whole, continue. The whole reason they're there is the bank heist. So, like, right, but the they story don't... goes on and they're trying still to get away from being blamed for the bank heist. Okay, so it's been a minute since I've seen it. It is ever present. Okay. I mean, I... Honestly, like I saw that movie probably twice. Like no, man, it's it's, it's, good, it's a great I, fucking you know, movie. It's one of those classic, things. classic. Uh, I I would call it '80s comedy because you said it was what '92. That's what you call a curveball, Chris. Oh, you Inception. Have, you great movie, not a curveball. You've bitch. got nothing, nothing, my friend. Wait, I got twenty other choices. Wait says you're wrong. till mine lands. <laughs> um, have you seen Trapped in Paradise, Quinn? No, no. I, I've seen like, all your yours is like vast list of like '80s, '90s comedies. I've seen like almost none of them. It, it, I mean, but no, here's the thing. I think real. it's about it's about it's about um, availability, right? Yeah. Like these are the things that would pop up on Comedy Central or yes. on HBO, I watch and these all uh, the time on with, a, like with, it came on every other Friday in December. You know, <laughs> with uh, the way we do everything now, um, yeah. uh, the way we do everything now, um, you choose what you watch. So now you've got to flip through fucking a single picture and be like, oh, I don't know if I want to see that based on that picture in these six words. I actually Whereas, avoid streaming platforms if they don't have a synapse with the picture. Cause I'm like, I got to click on it first. But with Fuck cable, you. but with cable, you, you tap, 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 landed on something was like, all right, I guess this is what I'm watching. You're Fuck committed to Disney. it. So, um, uh, I recommend Trapped in Paradise. So I will, I, love that movie. I will take us to break here with my first pick. Um, I am going to, I don't remember the year, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna recommend Drive. Yep. Nice. Oh, on my list. Damn. On my list. Yes, yes. bro. I was gonna say For that sure. Um, it's, I'm, I'm actually really glad that, that everybody like, hears it, so there's yeah. not oh, one divisive driver. person You're about this. Yeah. I think Drive is brilliant. It is. It absolutely is. The, I was, I was the, the driver, that's my bit. The, 
way that people criticize it with Ryan Gosling never saying anything. Oh, no, I love the right one. Yeah. His, his emoting in that movie is so out of this world. You, you, you are a lo- he makes you feel along the ride with him the entire way. Right. Right. Brilliantly silent. Yeah. It's just like you, there's never any question on how no. he feels because his, his face and way. his body language gives you everything you need everything to know. You know. Everything. 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 So I I recommend Drive if people Honestly, have been telling you to next, avoid Drive. Like, the soundtrack is phenomenal. It brought back dark wave, new you know, new when he 80s tightens sounding. his arm and they show the close up of his fingers around the hammer. Yeah, yeah. It's, and he never even swings it. Like, yeah. Oh, you know what it means. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, know what it means. Don't so yeah. for those who don't know, Drive is about a stunt man. He works in Hollywood and his side job is he's a getaway driver. He is the guy who arrives, drops off the people, and his job is to just get them out. And he has rules and he has, you know, a, a way that he goes about it that keeps him safe. And he's not connected to anybody or whatever. So he's this very um Clint Eastwood, uh man without a name. Exactly. type of character but, dollars yeah. and it's a it's a slow burn it's not a heavy action movie however is it's an impactful story that i just i, I highly recommend it the color what is it wrist ruffin newer wrist ruffin I'll, I'll 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 get the name when we come back from break um but uh, the the director has very few movies that I enjoy, but Drive is Drive is Drive one is, of them. Yeah, Drive so is, good. Drive is, is, so yeah, that brilliant. was his that, that, that was his magnum opus, in my opinion. I don't. Yeah, think, I don't think he'll ever do anything to that. I don't know, think right? so. Um, it's just yeah, it's it's too. That's hard. a hard match though. It's like it was, too hard it was of a movie that to fucking top. good. Yeah, yeah, it's too hard of a movie to top. Like you literally, you have laid out your. This is your piece. Like yeah, it, like Ryan you know. Gosling's brilliant brilliance aside in his performance, like the cinematography, like the whole pack. It's um, all there. what's her name? Uh, Heath Ledger's. It was Heath Ledger's ex wife, right? Yeah. Uh, is it Carrie Madigan? Uh, no, something like that. She's super cute in that too. She's I actually adorable. just watched like three weeks ago. Yeah. Adorable, but she and the, her role, her like she she carries. She is the only dialogue that we yeah. get from his side. Three screens. You can't Google one thing. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm talking. Fucking with you. I can do it. Uh, but that takes us to uh, the break. So we will be back in uh, just a moment, everybody. Uh, stink with us. I said stink with us. <laughs> stick with us. Fart. Ready, gentlemen? Oh, yeah. Refreshing. Such a nice sound. Too. Yeah, isn't it? Every time. Every time. New drink, new movies. We're back. Um, top of the list we had this evening. Our recommendations were Reservoir Dogs from Quinn. Chris suggested Inception. Joe threw out Trapped in Paradise. And we closed out before break with my recommendation for watching Drive. Yes, so that sir. brings us to Quinn. Uh, Quinn, what's your next recommendation for us tonight for heist movies? It's... um. It's one of my favorite, like, neo-Western movies. It also happens to be a heist movie. It's called Hell or High Water. Um, it's, uh, it's about two brothers that have to steal their um, land back from a, uh, from a bank. So they rob a bunch of small banks, then they like, wander them through uh, what's it called, a casino in order to get like, Yeah, it's a, it's a Chris film. Um, <laughs> it's very Chris. Uh, <laughs> You can take the boy out of Texas. You can't take Texas out the boy. Yeah, it's it, it <laughs> it's it's awesome, true. and it really does capture the whole like, like uh, don't tread on me thing. Like like literally like the just the people in the town are chasing them down after they rob the bank and stuff like that. There's like this giant like shootout at the end, and the like uh, the main the main brother is like very cold and calculated. The other brother is like really reckless, and they're a really cool dynamic duo. It's a I think it's an awesome movie. So I haven't seen that, but um, it's been recommended to me a lot. Same. Same. I've never seen it. I've heard about it, but I yeah. haven't seen it yet. So, and I believe it's, I believe it's available on Netflix. Yeah, it if is. I'm not mistaken. It is. Um, Joe, have you seen Hell or High Water? Yes, uh, one time I believe. Maybe knowing me, saying once is probably two or three times. But yeah. uh, when did it come out? It's been since probably then. Probably five years or so. Yeah, yeah roughly. Yeah. So like not fresh on my mind. Right. But, yeah, but you've definitely I'm aware seen that. of it. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Um, wow. So, 
That's one that was quick. Who's yeah. Uh, yeah. Who's in it? Because yeah, we haven't um, seen it. It's yeah. uh, Danny Chatham and some, his brother is just some no-name actor I can't remember. Um, yeah, and then the... It, it's Younger very, guy? Yeah, what got me into it was it, it's very like, well, I kind of fell in love oh, with dude. No Country for Old Men. I was looking at other like, neo-westerns and stuff. Oh, okay, and I, yeah. I came across it. I was just kind of exploring the genre. I mean, it's a it's a it's a really cool movie. Like, there's a lot of cool shootouts. There's a lot of cool yeah. like. It's like, been heavily recommended. Yeah, they're to me. they're they're like brother bro, brother and brother dynamic. I do it's enjoy like, Channing Tatum, bro. But usually, what did like, you say was in this? He said Channing Tatum. The, bro, you're guy. way off. And I love Channing Tatum. <laughs> Who is it? Who is and I do enjoy him. So, I don't Pine. think he was in that movie. Chris Pine. Dude, they're the same dude. Come on. They're not they're the same. Chris dude. Pine. Chris oh, Pine. And by the way, the no name brother. That's, Chris that's Pine is ben Channing Foster. Tatum's butt plug, bro. Chris <laughs> Pine okay. is so tiny. Okay, but to be fair, to, to be fair, what has Ben Foster been in yeah. recently that Youngblood here would have, like, connected with but, but i love ben foster i love ben foster he's also, archangel and he's the fucking doofus from fucking punisher man so jeff bridges is in this film yeah, he's the main cop. so that's why that's i was going to say jeff bridges but i didn't want to misspeak let me see his face yeah yeah no i mean you don't Channing have a phone? Dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mixed it up. I mixed it up with a different movie that's also on my list. You're thinking of Channing Tatum and Donnie McBride, and that's this is the other <laughs> makes Channing Tatum is a bitch. No, like what the no, fuck, no. Quinn? In, in my brain, there's a, literally like a frame of the movie where he's sitting on the farm with the oil things in the background at the end, and it's a little chain of Channing. I don't know how. Actually, no, it is Chris Pine's coming back to me. He's got like his kid and stuff. They look yeah. nothing alike. They look kind of alike. <laughs> I'm dying over here. At There's all. at least like at, at least eight inches, if not a foot and a half of height. Yeah. Not to mention muscle mass. And I'm uh, sorry, Chan Tatum looks like somebody pulled his ears out. I I, yeah. But they don't look anything alike. I don't know. Uh, yeah, fucking, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, so okay. Not to, not to not to beat Quinn up. But, <laughs> let's be fair. But, but if we're bringing up Channing Tatum, I love him as any kind of supporting, like just pop up role. He's Absolutely. so fucking hilarious. Yeah. When you let I him, I think just he's, he's do genuinely silly funny. Shit. When you just let him be silly, he's yeah. fucking I mean, honestly, hilarious. That's why he's so good in the Magic Mike stuff. Like I've never seen the Magic Mike good, stuff. You know they're like, doing a third one. He's not yeah. afraid of the yeah, comedy, it's like Triple XL or whatever. The of, hell I mean, of course it is. Why would you name it anything else? Yeah, but yeah, it's. Yeah, it's him and Selma Hayek. Of course. And, well, and here's the thing: it hurts me because like it's a Steven Soderbergh movie, the first one, and I'm like, oh man, I, I gotta. It was man actually man good. Man. Was People like, try and tell me that, but I'm just like, <sighs> I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. Like I've I, never I was, seen any of them. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like the first one, I was I was the same way. I was like, I don't know if I really want to watch this. And my wife wanted to watch, of course. But I was like, I don't know if I want to watch this. And I'm like, fuck, it's Soderbergh though. So I sat down and watched it, and I was like. Believe it or not, this is a really good fucking movie. Well, I'm sure it like, is. This is sort of a sure The first two acts are really great. Yeah. The third act's like, oh, cool. You know, but it, yeah, it was really awesome. I've just never been forced. So you're, you're seconding Magic Mike? Yeah, I, I did. I actually watched it on a plane. And um, yeah, the first two acts were really cool. Okay. Third, third act was like, I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the full Monty. Yeah. Because that's really what that I actually haven't from. seen the full Monty, but I'm aware of it. So good. Yeah, dude, that's a so comedy, good. right? Yeah. Yeah. With the. Not American. Anyways, are, are they Hella British? Is it British? I wasn't sure if it's British or, <laughs> <laughs> British or Scottish. What'd you say, Joe? How the fuck did we get here from Hell or High Water? Yeah. Oh, we, Hell or High Water takes us places. So that takes yeah. us to Chris. Chris, Texas what's uh, what's your you recommendation? So in, I'm in the weird line here on this one. Like I've got two that are really good. Could I could I have you speak into the mic? Oh, yes. Sorry. I I have two that are really great. So I'm kind of in this line of like, fuck. What do I? Which one do I pick? Um, that's I'm, right because we each only have three, so. right? So it's tough. I right? got twenty over here. If you I've got an, twenty. If you need an answer, I'll no, give no, no, you. No, no, no. one so wants like, to say heat. Everyone wants to have like the fun one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the problem, right? That's one of the ones. Well, so now here's if the thing: you're listening to the podcast, we don't use the quit essential. Yeah. I'm trying not we'll to. We'll talk about right? that later. Right. right. We, 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 we did, we'll we do did, our we highlights at the wrap up. Right. And and it. If if so. if you weren't aware, just so that you're aware, we will talk about things that didn't make our recommendation as kind of an right. honorable honorable right. mention. Right. So so here's my thing. Okay, this is, and I'm not talking about the fucking horrible remake. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I am going to go back to the lovely '80s film that was amazing. Okay, so I I I, I you already know. I thought about this. I thought about this. What? 
Uh, no, no, no. I'm just going to say. 1980 Blonde. Yeah. Point Break. Yep. Ah, oh, dang it, dude. Right. Oh, we just stealing yeah. off. We're just like. Dude, you guys are destroying. We're right. heisting. We're heisting all of Quinn's picks. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. dude. Point Break is amazing. Awesome. I knew someone was going to mention it. I, I was. I can't be the one to mention it because I, I've honestly not seen it enough. Like I've probably seen it once, and it was so before good. any sort of appreciation. It's like it's it's right. due the a Swayze, revisit for dude. me, right. and I almost Swayze. did. Sways with the Reeves. Yep, the, I almost did revisit. There Shana. were a few. Shana, bro. There were a few that 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 when I was putting Lord my list Lily. together that I did rewatch. Uh, that was not one of them. Yeah, no. I mean, it's just a great movie that like goes down this whole surfer thing and then turns into a heist movie, and you're just like, holy fucking shit! Yeah, it's, it's, it's so crazy. Good, dude. It's so like yeah, everything about it. The, the, and I mean, if you think about it, this led Keanu into Speed, this led Keanu into mm-hmm. all these bigger roles, which now is, you know, obviously Matrix and John Wick. And John Wick. Shit, right? You know, but the Sways, man, like, the Sways lays it on thick, and he always does R.I.P. also from man. Texas. Yes, man. Um, I was actually at his theater that I actually, his junior high theater that he danced at. When, Swayze's? Yeah, like. Three weeks ago, it was a lot. Of oh no, kidding! Before I came up, no I was kidding. Working on a show, yeah, yeah. It was Legends cool. never die. So that's that's something me and the Sways have in common. I was a dancer. Really? Yeah, nine I mean, years. I know we that. Love, that's amazing. Yeah, nine years up until I was about jazz sixteen. And tap jazz, and... tap, ballet. What? Yeah, yeah. Man, I learned. Something I know. I'm a klutzy. I'm a klutzy day, chubby man. fuck now, every but uh, yeah. Float like a butterfly. I was never like graceful. I was never. The, the one thing I had, the one thing I had going for me was my penis, right? Because back then. Not a lot of guys danced, Uh and the girls were ecstatic to do partnering, and Mm -hmm. you can't do partnering without Mm -hmm. the guys. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, we kind of, like, revolutionized everything that was happening because me and my brother, and there were two other gentlemen our age, and so, you know, we did six, seven years. We took competitions and things. But here's the thing, though. I didn't take it super seriously. We we went from from playing baseball to that based just on the family things. in his mother's hallway. Oh, yeah. Boys, I got stuck. Yeah. Uh, but long story short, that led me to loving theater and being in theater and Absolutely. henceforth here. Hence what happened with Sways. Like, I'm sorry, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Like, well, because before Jabberwockies, dancing for a dude was was not the thing. Like right. it wasn't cool. Like yeah, I yeah. I hid it from my peers. There was no there was no flexing about being a dancer. I mean, there was a stint in the eighties with break dancing, but that's a whole different ball game to Breaking choreography. To electric, boogaloo. electric boogaloo. So yeah, great pick, Chris at uh, uh, Point Break. Fuck yeah, love that uh, love Joe. It. What do you got for us? I got another. Joseph Gordon Love it's special. Oh. The Lookout, 2007. A gifted high school hockey player has his life turned upside down by a car accident, which leaves him with a brain injury that causes memory loss. Now forced to take a job as a night cleaning man in a bank. So he's a night janitor, right? This is just like the brief synapse of the overstory. He works as a janitor and he befriends a gang of bank robbers who use him to access the bank. Wait, what movie is this? The Lookout. What year heard of What this. year did you yeah. say it was? 2007. Okay. Director Scott Frank, screenplay Scott Frank, Miramax. I've not so, seen this. I feel like yeah. I've heard of this and I, I think somebody had told me at one one time to go see it, but I just You got Joseph Gordon. Well, Joe is telling you to see Jeff it now. Daniels, I know. Ilsa Fisher Matthew Good, I like his official. Carla Guino. Why is Jeff Daniels like an every dude, freaking dude, movie? I don't know. Movie, like, I don't know. It's weird, right? This movie did go Was he in it for radar, more than five I'm minutes? I'm telling you, this is... It's fucking is it an action-type heist movie? Is it a, a like a swagger-type heist it's, movie? It's, it's a little bit of swagger. It's a little bit of a slow burn, but there it is high-octane. Like, once it gets you... You're gripped. And what are they? What are they trying to? They're trying to heist what? So Joseph Gordon Lovett is a simpleton, basically, right? Like his his ad, he got he had a head injury, and now he's a night janitor. Oh, okay, right? okay. So this the girl, Elsa Fisher, in the gang, manip- manipulates him, right? As girls do, right? Yep. They let he lets him into the bank, right? And then shit goes down. Interesting. The lookout. Wow. Yeah, no spoilers. No, yeah, don't not not yet. Um, it's like, not, really not, good, not unless that it's one really comes good. up as our, our movie to view. I was gonna say, like, it seems like a lo- some of our heist movies. I, I enjoy I enjoyed are... the lighting in this thing. I, I really yeah. enjoyed like the cinematography. Wasn't like nothing's over the top, 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's very subtle, but it's also in your face when it needs to be. It was just really well done, but didn't, I think, get the clout that it deserves. You know so I mean? there are so many titles that are listed here, and uh, it's amazing how little crossover has happened on my list. So um, we've got one, two, three, four, five more recommendations, um, including my next one and then everyone else's last. Um, so I think there's a lot of movies that we might <coughs> do some brief discussion of later. Um, but I like where this is going right now because there's there's a lot of variety happening here. Um, and can I inter like it's interesting that like we are naming. I know I know we don't do the norm, right? That thing that everybody everybody's seen, right? We, we have yeah, done a couple. We don't want to talk about movies everybody else right. is talking about. Right, but I do love that. Like heard that podcast. We've had two now, right? Exactly. But I do love that we've had two now. That's like Hell or High Water. You and I haven't seen. I it. haven't seen it. Right. Same thing with Lookout. I, yeah. I haven't I, you know, seen it's it. It's something like, shit, I, maybe I should add that to my list. Yeah, so you know walking, I mean? like, walking, I like being able to walk away with my own stuff. Like, I, if I saw everything, then it was like, okay, cool. I mean, yeah. obviously, they're even great even movies. If we don't roll it on die, I'm, no, like, I'm taking that title home anyway. Yeah. So, absolutely. so that's where I think I'm, I'm hoping to go with this next one. I don't think this one is too crazy under the radar, but I'm not certain how many uh, at the table here have seen this one. Um, so, my next recommendation is going to be. Um, before the Devil Knows You're Dead. Okay. This is one of, um, God, I believe it's the director. Film. Sydney. It was, I believe, Sidney Lumet's last film. Uh, it stars Ethan Hawke okay. and Philip Seymour Hoffman okay. as a couple of brothers. Yeah. Who, Second time he surprised who, me. What's Wait, that? When was this made? Uh, 2011. Let me, let me look real quick. Like, I feel like I remember hearing about this. So movie. here's, here's the story, and here's where the heist Seymour is. Hoffman's the movie, last, this movie is told very much so, out of sequence, very Tarantino, yeah. very uh, Christopher Nolan, sure, right? Sure, sure. And it kind of builds. And the tale is that these two brothers, one, I believe, is doing well, and the other one's not so well, or okay. whatever, okay. but their parents own a jewelry store. Okay. And one thing leads to another to where one brother talks the other into robbing mom and dad's jewelry store for a few dollars to take care of They're a thing. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And things no don't harm, go no yeah. things don't go to plan. Yeah. And and I hope even by saying that I haven't spoiled anything because it is one of those movies that like I mean, answers the questions you really as they get be asked more and so basic stuff. about the plot than that. Like if anything else, any, honestly, with that movie, anything else is giving something away. It's right. So it is so it, powerful. I mean, first off, Philip Seymour that, Hoffman. Right. It, I mean, come on. The old it Hoff, takes man. you on that twist. Oh. I'm telling you right 2007. now. 2007. Yeah. It's 2007. Gone. I even soon. loved him as Mattress Man. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so the synopsis Punch that Joe, IMDb dude, gives is when... Seymour Hoffman could have read... Oh, the well, see, here's the thing, dude, it's not just that. Love, so like, it's I'm Albert... Sorry. Listen, Albert so Finney's in it, Marisa, uh, Marissa Tomei, Michael Shannon, um, other faces you recognize, I don't know if you'd know their names, Rosemary Harris, uh, Brian O'Brien, but, but, but Marissa Tomei, but now, first off, there's a very, very sexy scene with Marissa Tomei. Don't be Same. stupid. There's she a talk good very sexy... Same no, no, Marissa. not, not Sorry, Rosie I'm Perez. Not, not Rosie. To, Marissa Tomei. My, my Family wife, guy my wife if you have to watch this, I do love you, but uh, say more. Oh, my God. <laughs> watch, watch... I highly recommend all of the quality things about Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. Yeah, yeah. Including Marissa Tomei. I like Marissa Tomei. Like, I mean, I think... Sorry, Quinn, you're going to not be involved in this, but because uh, the only Marissa Tomei you know is from Spider Man. Yeah, um, yeah but she's uh, hot, dude. She's what still a hot, hot Aunt May. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to argue. But yeah. but he didn't know young Marissa Tomei. Like, dude. we all had. So, do you remember Marissa, Marissa Tomei Tomei's in The Wrestler? Day. Of course I do. Yeah. Before yeah. the Devil Knows You're Dead? Yeah. Better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All better all right so um yeah so the when two brothers organize the robbery of their parents jewelry store the job goes horribly wrong i mean triggering a series of events that sends them their father and one's brother's wife barreling towards a shattering climax it's just a fucking ride um sydney lumet is one of my favorite directors and i don't Good know stuff. if it's lumet or lumet i don't know i think it's lumet okay right. so lumet. can't say he's one of my favorites and mispronounce his name i guess you don't Whatever. pronounce the t i don't know where the, the fuck he's from French words. i don't know where he's France. from it could be Lumet. Or oh, French Lumet. Canadian. I don't well, that's fucking French. That's dude. neither okay. here nor the there. Yeah. Doesn't because, change. That's neither here nor there because now we need one from it's French Quinn. Indonesia. They still don't pronounce the T at the end of the fucking word. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh Quinn's turn. Yep. 
Okay. For the next. So my one. next run. Yeah. I haven't, no, I haven't done one. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, bro. You bro, need to look you out. Did, you did the second run. <laughs> Listen, I'm running this thing, okay? So, uh, somebody's got to. What is this for Twisted Teas, Joe? I don't count anything. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're beyond <laughs> counting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Numbers are numbers are <laughs> fictitious. Uh, fictitious. That's on camera. Okay. Just so you know, when you guys decide to watch so this video, you'll know how many Twisted Teas Joe has had. Yeah, count them. <laughs> I'll add a counter in the corner when I edit it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had one for Desperado. Yeah. And one when we started. Right. So yeah. third. Anyways. Oh, um, okay, so my next choice is Lucky Loden. It actually has Jay Tatum in it. Wait, which one? Lucky. Lucky no, Logan, Logan Lucky is actually what it's called. Lucky. Logan yeah, Lucky. Yeah. Get it right, homie. Pull out your phone or something. No, no, no some I, kind of I got it. I got it. <laughs> so, um, guys are giving him so much. Shit. Yeah, it's a it's a heist movie. It's about NASCAR. It's about this construction worker that uh like he's 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 got he's divorced and his girlfriend or his ex wife has like this new like husband who's like actually a Roy from the office. And he's like making he's Good making a Roy he's making office. a ton of money. I didn't money. think he did anything. I thought I he know. actually worked at that office. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's making a ton of money and this guy's gotta like come up with a plan. And um, him and his like his like redneck roommates uh, end up like robbing NASCAR, but all of his redneck roommates are like really dumb, and he's like kind of smart, and it's it's a really it's cool got, movie. Got uh, Daniel Craig, right, James Bond? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yep. I don't know why I haven't seen this movie. Cool, yeah. I, I yeah. come across it a lot. I yeah, remember thick, back when there were rental stores, I'd pass it, and it was like, you know, you have four copies of this one, ten copies of that. Logan Lucky always had like the one fucking copy, so I wanted to see it more because of that. Yeah, yep. but for whatever reason, it it didn't make the cut. When I made it's my a, choices, it's a really fun watch. It's got a twist ending. It, it's cool. It's a really cool heist movie. It's nothing. It's nothing special. Like it's nothing. It's, it's not like a crazy movie you like have to see. But it's a it's a good heist movie. It's got a cool twist. I mean, there's not too many movies about NASCAR that aren't like car, no car movies. You yeah, know? Days of Thunder. Yeah, you get to. It's cool. You know. Nice. It captures the deep <laughs> south. It's a very it's a very Chris movie. You know. What Texas the fuck says. is that supposed to mean? You know, it's just it's. Hey, you know what? It's redneck is shit. <laughs> <laughs> redneck shit. Fuck you. <laughs> what are you insulted what by is, redneck somebody, stuff? Somebody kind of, ordered. Are you a redneck? Sweet no. Tea. Well, just, then what are you insulted for? Well, I'm insulted because uh, everybody thinks that not everyone redneck. in Texas is fucking rednecks, and we're not. Like that's what I'm. That's what I'm. Insulted you go. About. You go about an hour. Like, oh, and like half. people in New York say, "Hey, oh, you're from Texas. You ride horse and boogies everywhere." Yeah, that's exactly what we yeah, do. Just look at no, no, I don't think that. Yeah. No, yeah. the buggy is ridiculous. But I know you had to take a horse everywhere. Of course, yeah. There's no such thing as like a car, you know, or a highway in Texas, or cable, or yeah. internet. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm or, excited for you guys to get electricity. Yeah, I know, right? It's amazing. The thought, the thought of electricity. Here's the thing. I'm just, I'm glad, at least for our sake, you coming up here that you guys at least have running water. Correct, correct. And, you know, at least, you know... Y'all talking about alternating and currents. And we're on our own grid, so, I mean, you know, <laughs> we can't get on the state, we can't get on the government. Okay, grid. so here's the thing. So, uh, if and when... I will give... I love if Texas and when Texas that. secedes... Fuck federal. They're like, we got this shit. Are you jumping ship, or are you staying in oh Texas? Oh, my God, really? You're, okay, so, <laughs> all right. Well, no, like, no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We don't have, so we don't have time Texas. for that. So, well, I'll, we don't have time for that. You got a brief answer? A brief answer. So... First of all, seceding will never happen. No, of course not. There's so many things that have to happen for that to happen of course in not. our laws. But <clears throat> if it was to ever happen, I am me and my wife are getting the fuck out of Texas. Sorry, welcome aboard. Because those are the crazy bastards that I do not want to be around. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm moving to Texas. Have you, have you not seen? Uh, if we secede, have you ever seen the bad, last time bad state things? Was the what Civil was that War, yeah. Oh man, I think it was yeah. bad things. Oh no, it wasn't. Bad. Oh, the Jim Carrey one, but yeah, that's not on our Jason list. So, no, yeah. Chris, yeah. of course I would. Uh, have no. you seen Logan Lucky? I have not. And, so, have you? Anyone seen it? I, I saw it once. Yeah. What'd you it think? It's good. I, I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's yeah, not. It's, it's not a crazy movie, but it's it's cool. You know. Yeah, you I, know. it looked like it had a vibe that was right up my alley. So I do want to see it. It's a good movie. It's on the trailer, it had, I can it say had that, the elements. But, yeah, but I, having not ever, like, this is the first conversation I've had about yeah. the movie, so no one's ever been like, oh my god, yeah. you haven't seen Logan Lucky? Well, it's so a now, it's now like, reason. It's, like, in the first act, they break Daniel Craig out of jail. There's a lot of cool stuff. If and, you enjoy Daniel Craig not being James Bond, I love Daniel fucking Craig. check this shit. I love yeah, Daniel Craig. I love Craig. him too. I'm just saying, talented. like, it's, it's not what he did after he got famous, but this is one of those things that got him famous. Uh -huh. so, right, right, right. He's brilliant. So, <clears throat> is it me next? It is you. This is your last recommendation so for the I evening. I know this is way not something that you're going to know. Yeah. Quinn, by the yeah, way. Today has 
been a lot of. I, I, I love the amount of titles that we're each able to walk away with today to watch. Right. So I am going to drop this one, and I think nobody's going to know this. Uh, it's actually on Shutter right now. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, Interesting. Yeah. A heist movie on Shutter. Yeah. I'm. So it is I'm a intrigued. horror heist film. Okay. Yeah. Brad, I kind of <gasps> briefly Samurai mentioned Cop. this to you. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Poltergeist this. is not a heist time. movie. It is not. Time cop. So this is from 1982. Okay, even better. I'm going to read the plot demon. out because yeah, it's go for hard it. To explain. Can you give me a title uh, so it, I can type it yes, while you're reading absolutely. the summary? I'm right there on it. Uh, <laughs> the name is Q, the Winged Serpent. Q as in uh, Q U. As in Q. Son of a bitch, you got me. As in just the letter Q. Oh, just this. the letter Q. Just the letter Q. Semicolon <sighs> the Winged Serpent. Interesting. And it is so right. New York Police Department. Shepard and Powell are working on a bizarre uh, case. Uh, microphone. microphone. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Apologize. NYPD Detective Shepard and Powell are working on a bizarre case of ritualistic Aztec murder. Meanwhile, something big is attacking people of New York, and only greedy small-time crook Jimmy Quinn knows where the lair is. So basically what happens, right, is that they are, and I'm not going to go full out, but there is an entire heist <clears throat> piece that happens in this where they're trying yeah. to rob they're basically robbing a huge jewelry store. Is this like a giallo or is it a horror? It is, it's like a hammer horror. Yeah, it's okay. like a hammer horror. So it was, oh, it's got a fucking dragon on the... Yeah, on it, the... It, there is a dragon. Nice, bro. That's yeah. it. Is it something like Dragor. that in the movie? Yes. No kidding. You got to be careful on Shutter because it'll show you some wild shit on the cover and then you watch it and you're like, yeah. well, what the... Where's I mean, that fucking Uzi well, thing? He Justin. looks ready to there burn and ate the countryside. A dragon, bro. Like, and so, David fucking Carradine? Uh -huh. You should have started with that. Well, David I was going Carradine to, but you didn't get the chance because somebody was like, can you give me the fucking thing before... Well, it's because you were doing this long preamble. I wanted to type it and listen. Hey, quit telling people how to talk, Brad. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. Floor is yours, Chris. Anyway, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, yes, David Carradine is in it, and it's fantastic. Also, Michael Moriarty. Let's not forget I about see Michael that. Moriarty. All right. <clears throat> and Richard Roundtree, which who is also very well known. Oh, Roundtree. Shaft. Yep, yep. So, Dude. it's a fantastic film. What's your Granted, talking? it doesn't. Now, I will. I will admit the effects do not hold up. Obviously, dude, it's 1992. Am I gonna get 1990? Uh, 1980? Am I gonna get 82 effects from it? Yeah, I'm sold. Yeah, oh, you just yeah. Shut your and mouth. it's creative the way they do the dragon Chef. stuff too. Like it's really good. so. There's a there's a dragon like a uh, create. Do they do 82? So they wouldn't have done any. They could have done blue screen like on there, like a puppet a little, or something. Little, little so it's not Ghostbustery. Is it a little no. more? A little more carpentry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'm fucking in. Yeah, it's hammer horror. It's beautiful. Sold. It's New York. It's it's Sounds everything cool. you think it's gonna be. Not, yeah. yeah, I can't. Yeah, I've never heard of it. It's Q amazing. the Winged Thank Serpent, you, man. And the guy's name is Quinn. <sighs> Shepherd. Oh, there is a Jimmy Quinn. Michael Moriarty plays Jimmy Quinn. Jimmy yeah. Quinn. Yeah, Jimmy. Last hey, name, not a first name. name. First name. Uh, I mean, I'll take, take what you can get. There's not a lot of Q names out yeah, there. That's true. Yeah. I mean, you kind as, of are as a, original. As, as a quick, I've, I've I've accepted that myself. Like, well, that's, that's a, not a lot of representation. No, you're also one of the last ones in line. Believe me, I know I'm a W. It yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a I'm a C, so fuck you. <laughs> it took me a while to learn I needed glasses. I'm, I'm yeah. swallowing the mic. I'm sorry everybody. I took I'm leaning into the iPad and all of a sudden just uh. but yeah, it took me a while to to um I don't remember what I was saying. Something about my last name. Oh, so get know that I needed glasses because yeah, yeah. I always got set in the front of the fucking classroom. Yeah, yeah. It was not cool. Yeah. It was not you can't goof around up front <laughs> at all. <laughs> Raise your hand, otherwise the teacher just picks you anyways. Maybe there was a plus to be in last name. With a, with there a, you go. So, Joe, we're we're filling time for you. Yeah, no, I'm ready. I'm just you fired away. Spit that like, shit. Okay, so I think I out of the list of twenty, kind of hard to I talk. have I have two here that I have already pulled up with like facts for Google and stuff, and they're really good movies. But out of this list of twenty, I'm like, oh, I mean, they're they're all fucking good. I'm just gonna do what's there. Fucking Guy Ritchie, Lock, Stock, Two, Smoking Barrels. So I thought, I thought about that one bad. hard. I thought I, about that one hard, and I was just uncertain whether or not it qualified as a yeah, heist. I thought it was going to be Snatch or Lock, Stock. Like there's those, robbery. Yeah. There's, but we'll let, we'll let cool Joe talk fun, about it. Yeah. I'm going to take it. So Eddie, played by Nick Moran, convinces three friends to pull funds for a high-stakes poker game against local crime boss Hatchet Harry, played by P.H. Moriarty. And Harry cheats, and Eddie loses... Giving him a week to pay back half a million pounds. Yep. Which leads to him and his friends being desperate because Harry wants 
his kid's to... dad's pub. Yeah. He wants the pub that and his dad is clean slate, no crime, right? right, right and right. this is gangster London we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So the gaggle of friends played by uh so there's Jason Fleming, Jason Statham, Nick Moran. It's a huge, it's huge, huge Dexter cast. Fletcher, Vinny Jones, you know, all these people. The four friends go to steal a bunch of weed. Yeah. What they call gack or what gear. Gear. Yeah, yeah that's what they're called gear. But so turns out that they're heisting the guy they're gonna pay. Right. There you right. go. It's just it's brilliant. It's hilarious. It's violent. Everything it needs to yeah. be. It's so much style. Yeah, yeah. The, well, it's Guy Ritchie. I mean, come on. Guy really? Ritchie, yeah. The way Guy Ritchie makes films is, well, the used to make films. British yeah. Robert the way that Guy Ritchie Rodriguez, used to make gonna, films you know what I mean? like, was a whole yeah. different style. Like, I, he's a genre of himself. Exactly. Like, he took what, what Tarantino did in his early work and was like, hmm, what if I put it on more speed? Exactly. Yeah. It's just average. Just that. His use of, of editing, his use of music, his use of camera work, everything is just so sty- Everything is stylized. There's yeah. nothing not stylistic about... Right, and a Guy Ritchie a film guy Ritchie is film. a Guy Ritchie film. Like, right. It's right. his brainchild. There's no other person. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's nobody else that's going to tell that story that way. That's true. He could take he likes your segmenting story the Tarantino and thing the way where he takes his brain stories and moves right. them you know, with continuity right. and, and introducing the different stories. He can have eight bonkers things going on at once and somehow pieces it all yeah. together to where you're you're, you're okay with it and it's follow along. It's just so yeah. good. It's just so good. Yeah. Well, that's a good pick, Joe. the fucking neighbors through the wall with the head through the vent. Right. Like, it's just... Yeah, I mean, Lockstock is, it's a great one. So I see, I see where we're at here, guys, because I, too, am having a hard time. Like, okay, because this, this list actually has surprised me a lot tonight. Because yeah. I'm not going to have enough time to say what I want to say about my... Yeah, I mean, my, at this point, I've got the last, I've got the last recommendation, my, so my, no one, my, my no one else... The highlight reel at I'm, the end, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad we didn't do Ocean's Eleven, you yeah, know, like, yeah, it's yeah. it's yeah, an yeah. obvious pick, it's right? Like, it's pick. it's a good movie. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not, it's better than the original was. It's a, it, right. it has since lost some of its impact because it was so popular and it, right. it wore itself out blah 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 but well, Ocean's 8 well, Ocean's when the women 12, did it Ocean's, that was really I didn't refreshing. end up seeing it yeah, yeah, Ocean's Ocean's 12, Bullock, Ocean's 13, you know what so yeah. I'm but looking when at when the women did it it was refreshing I'm looking yeah. at my list here and I'm looking at the different type of movies that we've pointed out here and we hit so many different genres that I'm not really sure how I can add something new to the genre uh, or to, to the, the highest plus with the exception of probably one so I'm torn really really between two and they're two yeah. Incredibly different movies. Um, do the one, one. One would be... Just do the one. A new genre. A new genre. It can't be... An, is, is it heist But it's or not? too new. So I'm going to go with... I don't remember what year this was. Let me see what year this was real quick. Hey, but hey remember is, when you told him to name the fucking name of the yep. movie because he was being too convoluted? Yep. Get to it. Yeah. Come on, Bradley. It's 2010. Ford. He's a Ford. <laughs> Don't ever leave him. 2010 movie called Henry's Crime. That stars Vera Farminga, Keanu Reeves, Good and James Conn. Good Keanu choice. Reeves plays an everyday guy who steps out of his house one day to go do I forget what, but his house is invaded by two robbers okay. who don't show up as robbers. They show up as baseball players, and they say that they need a new player. Their guy is sick. A guy comes in puking and all this other shit, and he says, we just need an extra player. And Keanu goes along, and they don't show up to a baseball diamond. They show up to a bank. And now he is the getaway driver. (laughs) And they fuck it up. And he spends time in jail. Oh, wow. That's the open. He comes back and he's just this regular guy and he explores he's lost everything now i forget how many years he did but the movie from there is him like i just did however many years for robbing this bank yeah, yeah, yeah. that i didn't rob right so i'm gonna rob this bank and the great choice of <laughs> the way yeah, that course of action <laughs> it's like hey i just spent a bunch of time in jail guess what i'm gonna risk it again but he didn't he I didn't mean, do anything if anybody's ever he been did to time any kind of jail i'm not even talking about like even just county 
It's criminal school. Yeah, yeah. you go to fucking is. federal prison. That's totally it all is so that's where school. That's where yeah. James Con comes in. He meets James Con in jail and says, "Listen, this is what I want to do when that's I get out." Fine. Or maybe it's after he gets out. But regardless, he hits up James Con, and the two of them then proceed. And and I don't want to give away anything else, but it's a it's not an action movie. Okay. Um, it's not a chamber piece, but it takes place basically between uh this bank. A theater and his apartment and the theater I don't want to ruin that 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 comes into play but that's where Vera Firminga comes in she's an actress okay. but uh highly recommend this movie so Very is it good. Vera or Vera, Vera. Uh, it's V-E-R-A Vera okay. okay okay can you explain like what's why is it called Vera I guess that's tomato that's tomato. her name oh, but that's okay. yeah that's, that's her name that's, that's probably, her name Vera Firminga that's probably tomato tomato you know probably I mean, like, I mean yeah. she's you'd have to ask her I think yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She would be more qualified. Yeah, I would think, right? <laughs> Don't call me fucking Vera. I'll call you whatever you want. Yeah. Look at me like that. Mm. Um, so let me let me type this down now that I've made. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> made a decision here. Every word out of Henry's my mouth. Henry's crime. Like, so are you saying like there's you, no filter. You, you truthfully enjoy so... watching the insidious films? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run down this yeah. list. Yeah. Um, like this is our yeah. this is our our list of recommendations that uh, we mm. recommend that our listeners take a listen to. Or take a... watch, man. Will they watch, <laughs> man? They watch. You could you could close your eyes. You could you could just listen. Nothing Thank stopping you, them. Nothing stopping them, bro. Thank <laughs> you. you know, maybe okay, so, Mister. I don't know who Chris Pine is. <laughs> I know who he is. I, just, I misremembered. Yeah, I mean. Quinn should know. He's been ignoring his eyes this whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, li- the list of recommendations for our heist movie. movies tonight are as follows. Uh, Inception, Reservoir Dogs, Trapped in Paradise, Drive, Hell or High Water, Point Break, The Lookout, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, Q, The Winged Serpent, Logan Lucky, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, and Henry's Crime. So we are going to talk a little bit about our um, discards or our honorable honorable mentions and such. Yeah. Before we do that, I'm going to give this die here over to Chris. Okay. You ever rolled a die before? I have. You know you want to keep it on the table. I do. Some of our guests don't. I know he needs to stay on the table. <laughs> Quinn especially. Dude, no, it was, uh, who's the Fred. same guy? It was Quinn. Fred. It was Fred. I kept it on the table. It's always your Ten. fault. Ten. Ten. Okay, so ten is Inception. <laughs> hey, okay, cool. Right. So I have I like that, that on DVD. Yeah. I, I just started watching that the other day. So Inception is going to be our movie that we that we discuss uh, next week at the the top of the uh, the next uh, episode. Damn it. It's it is good. Q, son of a bitch. Here's the thing. Yeah, These I are all movies I have. I'm I'm adding that to my Shutter list like yeah. right away. Yeah. Um, that's I mean, that's no we doubt. Could go back and watch. The um, so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna straight like we can we can all admit there's a lot of homework to being on this podcast. So I uh, you you. Thank you, Chris, yeah, for coming on and giving us a chance to uh, share our thoughts and your thoughts with us. Um, <laughs> but I'm not done. Uh, this one, I didn't want to give you extra homework, so I'm just going to throw it at you on the spot. Okay. Do um, you have a suggestion for our topic next episode? So I have, I thought about this because I was like, is this going to be a thing? So <laughs> I did. Brad. I did. I was like, Brad's going to throw some shit at me, so let me be prepared, right? So I did think about this. I actually would love to see you guys. Okay, so just because the listeners don't know exactly all about me, I do love horror. That's one of my things. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love for you guys to do a body horror episode. Body horror episode. Yes. Okay, so horror. this is okay. this is how uh, we do this. Can you elaborate? So, like, yep. So elaborate a little bit for us, and then give us the quintessential, the one that nobody should mention because you should just see it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, okay, so Cronenberg is obviously number one in body horror, right? Mm-hmm. Him and his son. His son's actually doing body horror now, too. That was uh, yeah. Infinity um, Pool, right? Correct. Correct. Infinity Pool, um, which is amazing. Um, really? I heard differently, so no, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, go see it. fucking great. Okay. Yeah, stop Absolutely. listening to people. Have, no, no. Infinity Pool is amazing. Hey, listen, I have only so much time. I get it. Right? No, you, no, gotta put, you, either, you either watch yeah, an yeah, hour or yeah. goes on the exactly, list. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Something uh, to be the kind but of no, really so like, me alone. Body horror, yeah, it's anything that relates to any sort of body manipulation in okay. a horror film. Right, so uh, one that I would say is quintessential that none of you should even mention, and it is a Cronenberg one, is The Fly. The Fly. The that's fly. the one I was going to mention. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's that's the quintessential body horror. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I did just recently see that, and it's a fabulous fucking movie. Yeah. So I'm, so I'm on board. 
I okay, can often... we elaborate on the because I I still have never heard about body order. So just it's sure. just about body like order. like the so, body getting um, mutilated. Let me try or... and think of something Not mutilated. Mutilated is a it's a form of body horror, but that doesn't have to necessarily. So zombies be aren't necessarily body horror because correct. they fall on their own. However, if something propagates some sort of like anything Lovecraft gross change, not a possession. Movie, right. So like it, you're not uh, do the exorcist. On when the last so time you different. saw me, I looked like this, and then but the next time I come back and I've got right. like engorged head or um a, a great movie that that would be relevant um had you shown up would have been evil dead rise so we all already uh, saw evil dead rise correct, correct um and there's not not the whole movie but the end sequence has a body, horror. body horror to it okay. and um okay i'm glad you did that clarification because i was like, like i just said possession doesn't count that's kind of what he so said like is. things happen yeah. to but a body that one scene the right horror. yes Basically. Yeah, so it's it's involving manipulating the body. Okay. So whatever can manipulate the body is in a horrific way. Okay. Yeah. Is considered I, I don't want to oh, suggest so many. The, the movie saw Legion. One of body horror? Yes. Right? Legion. Saw right? One. No. Where the old lady climbs up the wall saw and the ice lady. cream man yeah. gets the long arms and his jaw drops. Right. So the reason that Saw wouldn't be is because that's body modification based right. on things that are happening to them. It's not like... Um, the body itself changing. So like Frankenstein or something. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. That or makes like, sense. I'll give an example which this can be used in your list from Beyond. That is okay. one that is definitely a body. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do program. some. I'm gonna have to watch some shit. I think I I'm have, gonna have to I as have, well. Yeah. 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 But this is this, this is this is what we brought him here dive. for. You know. This yeah. Dive. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to be a little like don't get wrong like heist was cool and all, but I wanted to be a little more specific. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. And this will be this will be one of our first horror episodes, so um, I'm glad that you you brought it in because this is definitely a, a blind <clears> spot in my viewing is a lot of uh, body horror. So I'll probably go through and find some examples and be like, oh, okay, I didn't realize I could do this, but I, I'll reach out and probably watch some others it, that... There's a lot. Nice, like, dude. believe it or not, there is a lot. Like, you just have to... Wax work. works? Uh, yeah. I gotta look at it, but I think Okay, so, so we'll, Robo, we'll, we'll do Cop. some we'll do some clarifying off air. <laughs> off air. So let's, <laughs> let's bring it... So that's what we'll do next time. So, so next week, we are going to discuss uh, our recent viewing of Inception, and then uh, we are each going to talk about body recommendations horror. for body horror. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris, would you like to start with kind of mentioning a few titles that didn't uh, get brought up tonight? Sure, that we sure. About? Like some some movies that sorry, some movies that actually really I was like, oh, man, we should mention this, but we're not. Um, yeah, yeah. There's quite a few on here. Um, one of the biggest ones for me, obviously. We yeah, all, we all know Heat. Yep. Heat is an amazing heist movie. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Tom Sizemore. Uh, I worked with Danny as well. I mean, they're all just talented and super amazing. Danny Trejo. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he had nothing. He was telling me stories about that shit, and it was just fucking fantastic. Yeah, it was I'm just at, amazing to hear. I'm just, just being on a Michael Mann set is probably something oh, yeah. you know, an experience of a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Um, one that I wanted to bring up. But I was like, it's just too new, like, and I'm sure everybody has probably already seen it. Right. Uh, was Army of the Dead. It's so a, I haven't seen it, but I yeah. saw that, and I was like, oh, should I watch it for this? But then I was like, yeah, but it's probably, an, it's a new it's movie. It's so new, yeah. And I mean, it is a fun, it is just a fun, crazy is it? So it is worth seeing. I should I should take Absolutely. the time to watch it. I mean, we should go home and watch it. Like, that is, really? that is it's so good. Like, okay. it's just a fun Adventure into Las Vegas, full of zombies, I haven't been. I haven't been entranced by the Zack Snyder bug. So like, sure, he's got some I things that. I like, yeah, but yeah. like as a whole, if it's Zack's name on it, I'm not gonna be like, oh, I gotta no, see the new Zack no. Snyder. And I mean, that's the thing. Like everybody's like, bring back the Snyderverse, and I'm like, I don't uh, fuck care it, we're less. done. We're over it. Care less. Move past like, it. I don't care anymore. Like honestly, I, like I, I, I give so little rats asses about DC shit. Yeah, like if DC the, would fix their shit, which I hope James Dunn, please for the love of God, fix someone's it, got to like. Uh, because, I'm glad. So I learned they originally canceled Peacemaker. I heard. I learned yeah. that they're bringing it back, and I was like, "Oh, yes!" If anything comes of it, a second season of Peacemaker is fucking yeah, and glorious. James Peacemaker was cool. Peacemaker yeah. was dope, yeah. man. I highly recommend so was, Peacemaker. So was second. Uh, uh, the second Suicide, Suicide, Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah. 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 I almost brought it up on one of our previous lists, yeah. and I was like, mm, "I'm James not going to really, be that." Stinker. I think. I think James yeah, I was is very going disappointed to... when they canceled Peacemaker. Yeah, but they really are emulating Marvel just with like a dark with darker tones. Correct. With the whole thing. 
which DC has always been darker than yeah. Marvel. They should have been, but I mean, so, Superman. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to get hate. It'd be cool so, for them to do their. Some own of thing. our listeners uh, probably so, love DC. I'm not going to go hating on. No, so I mean, fucking Superman. I love DC, but I it's like a love hate. with yeah. it. like Marvel's get better. your fucking yeah. Marvel's just fucking better. They got their shit together. Even, when in, it comes even in the to comics, the even in the comics, yeah, even back uh, in the day of the cartoons. Dirty fucking yeah. world. No, I'm not. A, no, I'm not no. a comic guy, so I can't really I'm speak on a comic. Brian Michael Benz, Jonathan Hickman are, are way more. better I'm than sorry, any Lee, four. Lee and Kirby <laughs> did hit more grand slams. You're probably they a Green Lantern did. fan. Stanley at all? Okay. Anyways, all right. So the other two that I'll bring up briefly, really quick, right? Mission Impossible. I'm sorry, okay, like the first it one. Is, it truthfully yeah, is a high school. I, I thought yeah. about it. I thought about it. You know, uh, I honestly thought someone else would have mentioned it. Right. So right. I didn't. Right. And then the last one. Well, actually, there's two more, but yeah. Uh, Give it to us. Give it to us. Uh, Three Kings. Nice. I've heard of and I've heard it mentioned as a great heist movie. It is a great, seen, brilliant, great Love it. desert. And I'm actually, heist movie. I'm kind of bummed that I haven't seen it, having learned more. Because who directed that? That's uh, the guy who did uh, Hancock. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's Peter Burke. Yeah, Peter, Peter Burke, who I love. And I love fantastic. a lot of Peter Burke stuff. Yeah. But yeah, so I'll, I'll George Clooney, right? Yes. Yeah, I'll watch it. Matt, Matt, uh, George Mark, Clooney, Mark Wahlberg. Cube and Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm in. Yeah. I, so it's fun. to be it's honest, fun. here's what turned me off about that. I don't, I don't, Rush to watch too many military movies because sure. too often they're all the fucking same. Right. Well, this is this is like if you take out the king and you're in this palace, how do you not steal some of that gold? Right. When there's so too much to inventory. Right. Is ultimate. You know exactly. what I mean? And they're like, well, if we just don't tell them this is here. No, we just no, come back later and rich. take this shit. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, brilliant. Interesting. Like so, interesting. they're just like kind of lying about their where they're at. Their whereabouts, yeah, and no, try to hide this shit and come back. It's, right, it's really it's great. Good. It's yeah. great. You should definitely watch it. Uh, the last one, which is just a no brainer for me, I'm sure it's no brainer for y'all. I don't know if you've ever seen it when, uh, from Dust Till Dawn, like it oh, is yeah. it as is, a heist it's movie. A heist movie. It you is, said from Dust Till Dawn, they rob a bank, they rob a bank, but yeah. I don't, it, do, it doesn't, it does though, because the, they have to get to Mexico. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then make Here's the thing: if Joe, the if Joe heist. makes a case on this, we're the going back to Trust in Paradise. Pa- well, yeah. No, no, yeah. the heist isn't part of a whole three because you brought it up to defend and not. No, I it does. This one doesn't go through. Right, that right. turns into a vampire in a survival movie. Yeah. Right, it's right. a fantasy. But, but like, the heist is still the the heist is still barely the through Act One. No, no, no. It doesn't even go into yeah. Act Two. Yeah, well, it does because no, it doesn't. Not in Act Two, but in Act Three, it comes back up because guess who shows up? It's the guy that was coming to collect. Uh, right, but so... that's not part of the heist, right? Like he 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 took that money to pay this guy for an escape. So sure. I mean. Like, I still, he didn't I put still, he didn't put it on the list. So we no, semantics it. aside, yeah, it's a great I, movie. I, I it's think, a great movie. Yeah, I still yeah. think yeah. that there Dustin is Dunn's a high school classic. to it. You know? no, yeah. I, I remember watching it, not knowing it was like a, it had anything to do with vampires, and just dude, thinking, it's dude, a crazy dude, fuck I'm you. thinking this is some sick ass Tarantino shit. Like I can't yeah. believe he wrote this, and then it just fucking flipped, and I was like, what the actual fuck is happening? <laughs> but it's like, not a Tarantino film. It's a Rodriguez. Yeah, he wrote it. You know, I mean, stand alone without the vampires, honestly. Yeah, totally. Quinn, how about you? What you got? Okay, so um, the, the, the town with uh, yeah, yep. Matt Dave Cool, which is a great fucking yeah, movie. Very, I very I stand that Ben like, Affleck is a better director than he is an actor. I'm not saying he has, he's a terrible actor. He's got some great roles, yeah. but he's got some really shitty fucking roles too. Okay, um, Den of Thieves. It's kind of a shittier version of the town that. without Boston. Yeah. It's got Ice Cube's son. It's just it's just a heist movie. They've robbed the Federal Reserve. It's mm-hmm. cool. It's good. It's a heist movie. It's all right. Um, then, um, Good Time with Robert Pattinson, an A24 movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, um, I've, I've heard about this. It, it's, a, it's a much smaller heist, but it's, it's, he's, he, like, he has to, like, help break his, like, uh, 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 mentally challenged brother out of jail. Um, and then, and then they, <laughs> they steal, like, some stuff, and there's this whole, like, thing. And it's, it's, it's a much smaller in terms of scale, but mm-hmm. it's very much still a heist movie. He's on the run the entire time. It's really an anxiety, a kind of, like, thriller where, and the music is a huge part of it. It kind of gets you, like, your heart pumping the whole yeah, time. It's that, really that, cool. That's one I've not seen, but it is on my list. So. Um, and that's really all I got because you said heat and blah, 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 yeah. stole everything yeah. else. Yeah, <laughs> my, my, yeah, but Sorry. that was the it was one. collective. We all did. It was shit. We my all did. Was we, in we covered heat. <laughs> did we cover the score? No, no. Robert De Niro, Ed, Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Yeah, I mean, that's oh, a perfect. Movie. Brilliant. Honestly, The Fifth Element. 
He, the he, stones are stolen by Gary Oldman. What? Uh, it did. It's arguable. Yeah, it's, it's arguable. It's arguable. It's okay. arguable. Uh, red Notice with the rock and... Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. That was another one that's too new. It was yeah, just too new. But a great movie. Misfits. It's just fun. Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. Yeah. Which Misfits. one? The Misfits. No. Pierce Brosnan. Okay, have you seen Six Underground? The no. Netflix thing That's with the with Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds, right? That was that good too. I started yeah. to avoid a lot of those ones this, that were coming out. This is like that. Okay. I didn't see Bright. the losers. Yes, yeah. same same basic thing. But that one's more like ragtag than heist. And right? wh- which one? This is which one you comparing to losers? I am comparing the misfits, misfits. and Six Underground. Interesting, right? Like that, like operating outside the system, but mm-hmm. stealing from yeah. the rich to give back to the poor or the mistreated. Yeah. The Robin Hood story. Sure. What's funny is we didn't state any of the real 70s heist movies because there were quite a few. Oh, uh, yes. like, yeah. yes. like the heist? Yes. yes. So which, I, which I, there I, are really I, three so of. Specifically. Yes. There's the 70s, the heist, and yeah, there's two heist. called heist. Yeah. Yes. One, and I went looking for it and I one, couldn't find it. I wanted to watch it to at least have. The newest the, one, 2015, Robert De Niro. Yeah. Uh, fucking brilliant. Yeah. So good. Also, French Connection. The French Connection. Yes. Is that a heist movie? It is a heist movie. Oh, the Italian job. Uh, thing about. Yeah. yeah uh, that was one I was kind of avoiding. Yeah. Right along for a couple of... Because it's up the there with Ocean's ones, Eleven. Yeah, no. You know, it's, it, I mean, we're just, I didn't we're just think mentioning made the stuff. list. We got Army of the Dead, Army of Thieves. Yeah, Spider, and uh, Chris but, mentioned Army of Dead yeah. while you were 10-1. Um, Time Bandits. Just so the listeners know, 10-1 means you're peeing. Just yeah. so they're aware. <laughs> Take a leak. Actually, like, I could have held the pee. Like, I... Like had to fart so bad, I might have shit my pants, <laughs> and I didn't want to do that. Like, it's different than a burp, you know. Like, I, I didn't trust it anyway. I already let it rip. <laughs> Snatch is, is a good one, but is that really a heist? No, see, I, like, I toyed I toyed with that, that and with Lockstock and two. Yeah. yeah, but with Lockstock, it's definitely they're definitely stealing shit. Now, uh, Wrath of Man. Now you see me. Yeah, now you see me is a good one. I think now you see me is a is a it clever. A yeah, yeah, it's it a clever a one. Yeah. But I think like it's still in the zeitgeist enough to where it's like you know, sugar and spice. I've heard of get that the fuck I mean, out of here, Reese Witherspoon. Get the, the fuck out of here. Cheerleaders put on. This is like ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand. It's hilarious, bro. Okay. All right, so Joe's done. He's just no, no. he's just the last one. <laughs> Baby driver. I was gonna say. Oh, baby. oh see, this is why I said it was, uh, so. Okay, that's the last one. Yes, I was. I was heavily considering baby driver. I can't believe you waited to the very end. Fucking sugar and spice, yeah. and oh yeah. Oh, by the way, baby, baby driver. driver. <laughs> yeah, that was, fucking yeah. ma- musical Bell-bottoms. masterpiece. Yeah. Bell bottoms. Um. So yeah, I had some of the ones that you guys mentioned on here. Uh, baby driver is taking one off. So I was going to mention Die Hard. Yep. 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 While the main character isn't involved in the heist, it he a heist. it's a, it's a heist. That's, that's what, what the that's what they're there for. Another Christmas heist. heist. Yeah. It's a yep. Christmas heist film. Um, one that I rewatched Fuck to you, consider Christmas whether or not I exactly. should bring it up, and I do. I do think it stands. And had I had more uh, offers instead of just a three, it might have been a, a, like a first or, or so. But the Thomas Crown Affair is fun yep. as fuck. Yep. Yeah, it was so on my good. list. It was yeah. on my list, but I was like, it's, it's not a whole team of thing or anything. But he, but his really. his team, he has players, right? Right. Usually they're just not involved. But what I liked about right. that, especially right. in this in this rewatch, is it completely subverts like it, what is normally a heist movie, right? Right. Right. right, right. And right. takes you, you know, into the exploration and um, I don't know, just the relationship the NM's having with uh, an incredibly sexy Rene Russo. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Thomas Crown Affair, Die Hard, The Lady Killers 2004, uh, Coen Brothers. That's another one. Um, just good. fucking yeah. fun. Tom Hanks. Uh, Tom Hanks and, and uh, J.K. Simmons. Yes, yeah, so uh, Marlon Wayans. It's just fucking fun. Um, and then the one that I was toying between for my last mention as far as like, no, a whole new, there's a sci-fi one out there, but again, it's so new. that I was like, oh, everyone's in. But Rogue One is most definitely yeah, it's a, a heist, heist it's movie. It's a heist film. Hell it yeah. Is. Explain, it is. explain that. I'm trying to think of Rogue One. Rogue One is the Star oh, Wars yeah, they story. Get the plans. They have yeah. to get the plans for I the remember, Death Star. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice movie. Yeah, it it's totally was. Straight up. It's straight up. And it's, it's actually good, too. Like 
it's, I think it's yeah. for me. I, I it's one of the best things this the Star Wars franchise. There is yes. not a Star Wars yes. movie that doesn't hit every fucking. There's one for like it hits the yeah. the universe has gone everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't say it's There's my favorite Star Wars movie every... because without the original Star Wars, like that, I'll always yeah. have to place them higher. But as far as new content, yeah. Rogue One is fucking it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the last yeah, one, which I was like, oh, you know, if there was room to be cheeky, uh, this is a movie I do genuinely enjoy, but I can't merit it as like. Uh, is there some... room to be cheeky, bitch? I brought up sugar and spice. Gone in sixty seconds. Yes, it's a heist film. Yep. It's a hundred percent. And heist it's fun film. as fuck. It is. Wait, Fast and Furious Five. I, I was gonna, avoided yeah, Fast was Five so I, so hard I the fuck out of because <laughs> I was like, was we're so not on my fucking list. We're not so because it's so obvious yeah. it's there. But like for me, if if you mention Fast Five and you don't go down the list and mention like Ocean's Eleven in there, like yeah. if we didn't do the traditional top ten heist, exactly. I mean that's what but, Fast Five but is. Saying just Fast an five amalgamation is way worse than saying that. Heat and Ocean's Eleven because not only is it like. Super mainstream, but it's also just a trashy movie. Well, Unlike the the mainstream heist movies, right? True, so. true. But right. I mean, like, I'm sorry, like, he is a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece, and like for real, yeah. He there oh, are so many sure, of our dude. probably listeners that probably aren't even going to know what he did. I the okay. armory for that. I'm said saying, that think about the, think about like all the Val, Val, Val think Kilmer about was like it's some of the best performances the best, from De Niro, yeah. Kilmer, no. Pacino. I mean, I've asked so kids. I've asked. Brilliant. There have been kids that asked me when I brought up a Val Kilmer film, who who's Val Kilmer, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Right yeah, now? like yeah, bro. Heat, the yeah. same. What? All you know these what? fucking great like, movies. Robert so De Niro, even like seriously, like they've asked. How me, could you Robert not know who Robert? He's he's, he's well, hasn't they, gone anywhere. He hasn't gone anywhere. No, but they know him as like Meet the Fockers. Yeah. Well, he's and he's redoing Meet the Fockers now with that other fucking comic guy. They don't know him like Goodfellas and everything. Your guy. We grew up with My Robert guy. De Niro. Yeah, that you guy that, that uh, Bene Salco, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that guy. Sebastian Maniscalco. Is doing his family movie, and it's basically Meet the Fockers, but reversing and putting Robert De Niro. Oh. Regardless. Yeah. Uh, so tell us, so uh, let us know, guy, let, yeah, let us know well, if we missed any movies that you would have put on uh, our recommendation up. list here. Uh, we'd love to hear uh, some of your feedback. Um, thank you again, Chris, for coming on. Um, is there anything that you want to push or promote? Anything uh, that you've got released that you people should check out? Uh, not yet, but there are things coming. Okay. Um, there's several things coming. Uh, I can't. Some of them I can't actually talk about. Of yet, course, of course, of course, of um, course. But yeah, uh, a lot of stuff that I've AD'd and I will be directing in future this summer. Oh, exciting! So that'll be Sweet, fun. Dude. Exciting. That'll be fun, and we'll get that one. We'll get that one promoted because. All my boys are going to be on yep, it, obviously. Yeah, we'll talk about that one we'll when the time about comes. We'll talk when the time comes, you know. Uh, maybe we'll do a special pod just for I that. would be down with it. That'd be cool. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, there's stuff coming. But uh, Wonderful. The movie that's out, I... okay, so I kind of go against myself here on this. I would love to promote it, but, honestly, the the company that released it didn't really do a good job with the art and oh, yeah, didn't yeah. really promote it very well. Um, they The movie has... A Lovecraftian film in it. Oh, really, interesting. But on the poster, they put uh, this guy in a hood with an axe, and I'm like, that has oh, yeah. nothing well, to do with my film. Like, why is that there? So every now and then, there's a Pearl Harbor, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, it's one of those things where I'm just kind of like, okay, uh, I'm. Yeah, I just want to promote. Okay. okay. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force you to to mention anything. So. Um, and you have agreed to hang out with us, so you're going to record with us again, and we're going to do an industry chat with you. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, Where can the people find you to look up those things oh, when they do release? Yeah, uh, so Facebook, I'm Christopher Warren. It's really easy to find. I do go by Christopher on Facebook. Um, really easy to find. Just look for me. I'm in the Hannibal Lecter mask. Um, on IG, I am CWAR underscore 54, I believe. Okay. I don't have Twitter. Don't care about Twitter. Me neither. Um, I give a fuck about Twitter. I just could give two shits less. Insta? I, I just, yeah, just I yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me actually I'm confirm done. that. I, th- I had to do that last time. While he's confirming, Quinn, how can people reach you? Um, On Instagram, uh, Quinn with two N's, dot as in period, and then McLaren, spelled like the car. Um, And I don't really use Facebook too much, but um, yeah, find me on Insta. I have a, like a, in my Instagram bio, I have an Instagram page that's dedicated just to behind the scenes of stuff I work on. Um. So, yeah. yeah, and I think we should all probably start ramping that up so that people have uh, yeah, it's, it's just cool. inside it's look like into a, what we do when we're fooling around like on set and digital making digital portfolio, yeah, kind absolutely of. Yeah. publicity. Um, yeah. So it's actually it's seen... just hard with uh, with NDAs. Yeah, it is. It is. Fuck the NDAs, dude. But, we work. I mean, the stuff I work on is 
too small for them to say okay. shit. I'm gonna repeat this. Do not listen do not, to Quinn. Do you not will fuck not the have NBA. A job. <laughs> do not. Um, so it He'll is. Get there. So <laughs> I am. I am just C War fifty four on Instagram. Just C okay. War fifty four. So and that's two R's, not just one. Um, really easy to find. And uh, yeah, like I said on Facebook, it's Christopher Warren. I know there's a million of us, but literally look for the Hannibal Lecter mask, and that's me. So, right on from Joe? Texas. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on. IMDb and Facebook as Joseph Sheldon Quick and on Instagram at chaotic underscore artisan. Look for the Mohawk bitches. And I am Beeford Clark on Instagram and you can reach out to me there. Um and Beeford? Beeford. 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 Like B- Brad Ford. Like B Ford or B E. Yes. B F O R D B Ford. Clark. Got it. Got it. Got it. I yep. love it. With the and and that's not an ampersand it's just the at thing yep yeah. alright everyone well thank you all for joining us um, Chris thank you again Absolutely and uh, we will see you all next time thank you bye adios